the many the adventures that you have seen. Uh, uh, these individuals uh, had to have at times they met, did they not? Uh, unfortunately, I myself was not actually present at the moment that Corvus met the uh, other two members of our quartet. Um, but I have been assured that my telling of the story is completely factually accurate uh, and true to uh, the events of the, the time. So I wish to tell that story to you. See, it all started on the outskirts <laughs> of the city of Mina. Uh, two of Skywatch's recruits, having just lost their former partner, Sam, uh, had been sent out of the city to sort of take a little bit of a break from the city. Uh, they were Ada and Tustin. They had specifically been directed uh, to the north, to a city where um, a supposedly mythical spirit known as a unicorn had been uh, sighted. Um, uh, near an encampment, uh, the Skywatch had very little information on. Queen of Mina had not authorized anyone to be in this encampment. Um, but a place called, uh, I believe, Pont de la Croix. Pont de la Croix? Yes. As in Bridge of the Cross. <gasps> every time Danny says French, I get a little bit more excited because I forget every time. Canadian. Yes. Now, uh, at this, um, uh, this place is uh, several leagues to the north. You have secured uh, supplies and horses. Um, no airship, I am afraid. Uh, you find yourselves um, having just left the, the city. And I believe you two have only met fairly recently, Ada having served as a city guard before this. I can't believe they're just sending us back out here after what happened to Sam. Well, I know they're short on recruits right now in, this, <clears throat> in Skywatch. Otherwise, other people would have been sent, but I don't think there was anybody to send. This is a, this is a nothing mission, I'm telling you. That they just want us to go after and trap a unicorn. It's utterly pointless. Well, at least... have gotten anyone to do it. At least we get some sightseeing in. You didn't know Sam as long as I did. It... It's just, he, he really had our back out there and we could have done better for him is all I'm saying. I forget that you're very young. You have to understand, I've lost a lot of people. I guess, I suppose you get used to it. He I was a good guy. I won't ever get used to it. Just the look on his face is, can't even. He was so surprised. We were all surprised. Could have been any one of us out there. Mm, I don't know about that. Oh, really? Not to speak ill of the dead, but I do think Sam made a couple mistakes. Well, that's what we're supposed to be there for, aren't we? I mean, You're just right. because, just because he wasn't checking his Checking his rear as often as he should have been doesn't mean we couldn't have been there at that fatal, tragic moment. You got to that, check your six. Yep. Yeah. Well, if we do find a unicorn, maybe we'll get to keep him. That'll be the day. Probably not, but you never know. I know, I know you haven't been with the watch too long, but nothing that's ever good stays very long, it seems. I think, I think this is going to be my last mission with Skywatch. I'm, I'm just done. It's, it's all been too much. I think you should just give it some time before you make a decision like that. You don't know me, Ada. This is, this is it for me. All right. After what happened to him, I mean, oh, yep. just. Nobody wants to be stampeded. No, not certainly. It was a terrible not by, way to go. Not by all those tiny, tiny little feet. Their hooves are sharp, though. So sharp and prickly and They were still finding pieces of him after. It took him a while. Anyway, shall we head out? Let's do so. 
All right, the two of uh, these people, you uh, you get upon your horses and you you travel north, I assume. Uh, mm -hmm. You go directly to this point. Is there anything you wish to secure? All you know right now is that um, some of the local people who are a bit superstitious and uh, known to be, maybe be suspect have said that they are haunted by this uh, unicorn. Um, can I? Uh, what can I inquire? What day it is? Um, yes, it is. Uh, um, what is the Friday day again in your? Ah, Friday. Friday. We can. Uh, no, <laughs> it's it's, it's Fri Friaren. Friaren. It's Friaren. Yes. I can help. Um. Great. <laughs> uh. Yeah. We just want to make sure we have enough supplies for a couple days. Yes. Yeah, and uh, we will have uh, will have asked for a description of the unicorn. Mm -hmm. um, you uh, ask around, and everyone you'll talk to has a different sort of. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I didn't actually see the unicorn, um, but I heard at Point of Quad they saw it. It had um, like a crown of of horns on its head. Um, like 30 horns just jutting out, um, and it has the body of a cow and the head of a lion. <sighs> Locals. Oh, well, if, if you're going that way, good luck, because I hear when it stares you in the eye, you turn to ooze. That's a unicorn. So hard to get good information. Mm. Well, don't say I didn't warn you, jeez. Skywatch. All right, we we head out we head out north. Do we? How how much of an idea do we have as to where like the unicorn supposedly is? Um, you have you've been told it was sighted near this encampment near Pointe Um, okay. but uh, uh, Pointe Croix, But um, you don't. Uh, um, it's been vague sightings. People have have seen it from a distance. Um, they've reported that it um, seems to follow people, children especially. Um, so is it that encampment that reached out to Skywatch for help? It's actually the village nearby the encampment. Okay. Uh, people, okay. the village, kind of keeps themselves normally. They sent their like bravest, like aldermen to Mina to beg for help. Right. Uh, okay, we'll uh, we'll ride out there. All right, as the two of you ride, it takes about, um, you, you arrive about evening. Um, it, uh, Pont de Croix is in fact a bridge, uh, and it is a cross. Um, strangely, <laughs> it's just a large wooden uh, span that's railed, but it has two outcroppings that go out, go out over the water, um, which creates a nice view. It was built ages ago. No one's actually certain when it was built. Um, but uh, it's, it's, there's always been a town there. The town is also called Pont de Croix. Um, and uh, as you approach it, um, before you even arrive at the village itself, um, you hear shouting in a, in, a, in a farm nearby, out in a field of crops. And you see a crowd of people gathered around. And uh, I suppose we should investigate. I think so. All right, we're going to. Clop de 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 Six hours before this, Corvus. Yes. As we, us. You have been traveling for some time from your forest to the far north. Yeah, so. Rugosam is known for being that large forest in the north and. That because we are a forest, we don't have all the goods, so we often send out trading parties to go to the south to trade what goods we have, really rich woods, really fine, really made goods, made from the wood, uh, to the south. Is that, is that what we're doing? Uh, <laughs> sure. Can you tell me why you've come here? Um, and... In the village, it's not really like one family. The Gallows family kind of extends out into the others. And Corvus is old enough to step out of the forest, if only with an entourage? What is the word you Escort? Guys? Escort. 
Yeah. Yes. Chaperone. There it is. Ziz, Ziza, I believe these are like words. the the like the days before your rum spring out. Yeah. Right? So like just You're to get a ready. little bit so there's not as much okay. exhaustion exploring. So like we're going to the nearest village. Uh, it's just a couple of us, maybe t- five. Is it like Final parents. Fantasy 15? Is there? It, you, you mean are are we in a amazing vehicle? Well, yeah, and is, is there like? Are we pushing the car the and saying who, "Stand by me"? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I wanted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to you, it is an amazing vehicle. To other people, it is an old wagon that is made of bundled sticks that are unfinished. Um, so it looks sort of like a. Um, I don't know. Imagine like. Uh, imagine like a basket where we weave the forgotten branches that have dropped into something that they can have with giant log wheels. Yes, it is that. People <laughs> stare as you go by, they mutter of the people to the north, um, and you arrive at uh, Pont de Croix. Um, where would you like to stay the night? There is no real shelter other than the no. buildings here, because in this place they clear away the forest. Right, so what we do is we will make our own encampment. We have a like long sheet that we make from the fibers of the forest that we can put up and then we normal make a camp. Just slightly far off there's a small light if you can look from the forest or look from the village of our people. We celebrate. As you start to set up, one of your um, uh, fellow uh, people of the forest comes up, an older woman. Mm -hmm. She says, Corvus, dear. Yes. Have you thought, perhaps, of not staying with us tonight? (laughs) Well, it's just you're about to go off on Rumspringer, (laughs) and I can't tell you how many people we've lost on Rumspringer because they, they are not comfortable with people. They run into the nearest forest and not every forest is as friendly as ours. I understand your concern. My roots have not spread. However, Grandmama. Yes, Corvus. <laughs> you know that we believe that those who don't return are not strong enough to do so. And if that is the case, then praise be to the thing that destroys me. She's <laughs> been a dutiful grand person, yes. a grand offspring, and I appreciate that, but the time has come for you to rebel a little bit. Why, when I was your age, I danced naked in a field with a group of satyrs. It was a marvelous time. <laughs> Have you ever danced naked no. in a field of satyrs? Oh, Grandma, take take your, you, you need your tea. <laughs> Don't give me tea, Corvus. You're just trying to keep it safe, but it's time for you to add a little danger to your lives. I have been thinking of perhaps not leaving the forest. Corvus, have we not taught you the ways of the forest? (sighs) Rukusam needs me. To to be kind to people, to steal things when you need them, (laughs) and to poison your enemies by injecting them with the poison of the forest. I do, I do take after you, Grandma. <laughs> well, what more do you need? Those skills will keep you safe here, but isn't it time you adventure on? I t- ne- adventure is not necessary. Death will come for me wherever I am. <laughs> oh, Corvus, you are always a dour one. <laughs> we should have never let you lacquer your nails with black. No. Black her with black. Grow my hair out. All right. Well, I'll put this to you a different way then. You're not welcome. And your grandmama turns into a gigantic spiked tree. Okay. She yeah, says, that makes sense. And she says, if you will not take my advice in my other form, take it in this. Leave or death will come for you this very night. All your family will rend your flesh from its bones and bury it here in the woods that it may grow a forest in this civilized place where they have no trees of their own. If you will not populate this civilized world, then perhaps you can fertilize it. 
Hang on, I'm taking parenting notes. Yeah. <laughs> She's done this many times. You, you know that you don't have to be that terrified. But. No, but we, we are the only few who are of the poisonous variety, so I understand. If you wish, when the sun sinks and the talisman is high in the sky, I will explore the city. Good. I'm glad to hear that, dear. And what could go wrong? Obviously nothing. Six <laughs> hours later. Um, we're at you, a bar. Well, no, this is, no this we're investigating. As you approach a crowd of people, uh, you see uh, a person in black tied to a stake <laughs> with wooden uh, logs piled up uh, at the base. Uh, and a, a bunch of farmers who look like they're about to burn this person. What? What Ada you... Blood with Skywatch, what is going on here? Uh, I was gonna ask the same question, but uh, but we're all good. I mean, we are. Clearly you all aren't. You got you got someone tied to a stake over there. Maybe yeah, wanna... we sure do. What is her crime? Their crime. His crime. What is their it... crime? Corvus. Looks... Cor- oh, I've heard of a- Corvus is we, one of the worst crimes. We don't know what a Corvus is, but it's definitely Corvus. We thinks it's a warlock. Oh, no. This is a- I've seen one of these before. They're- they're just one of the tree folk. They're, uh, they're completely innocent. They- they're not capable of harming anything. What's a tree folk? Uh, you- you catch glimpses of them off in the forest sometime, especially t to the north. They're, they can't, they aren't capable of hurting anything. They're completely, completely passive and completely innocent. We found her in the Widow Kell's hut stealing muffins. What kind of person steals muffins from a old woman? What do you have to say for yourself, Corvus? Are you muffin thief? Well, first off, these, uh, these plants are too green. They're too young. They won't burn. Uh, second off, just if you are gonna choose something to burn, the spirit of the plant has to leave it. So I'm pretty sure I'm fine. She's she's not asking you whether or not the trees will burn. She's asking you whether you stole the muffin or whether you acquired it through legal means. I guess you could ask the question, do you know the Muffin Man or did you rob from them? Do you know the Muffin Man? What's a muffin? She don't know what a muffin is. I told you, she's a unicorn. She's got to be the unicorn that people have seen. Stealing muffins, everyone knows that's no. what unicorns does. No, nah, no, nah, this, this is not a unicorn. It's, it's just a simple tree folk. Look. Also, we do believe in the court system. And even in this outlying area, you must have one. Sure we do. I'm the judge. Can I just start trying to get out? Is that possible? Uh, they tied you up pretty well. Do you have, uh... I do have a skill in Legimen, which is, is that the stealing pertain to... That's like palming. Mm -hmm. Um, but sure. Yeah, go ahead and make a, a, a check. Roll? Yep. All right, you can make a, a Legermain? Yeah, Legermain yeah. check. Uh, it is, I mean... 19 and... There might be some enraging happening. <laughs> All right. So well, do, I, well, let me tell you what's going to happen if I succeed. Okay. Just hold your asses. So, I have a stat point. I have five in my role playing. I'm going to use enrage, which means I kind of make someone upset as I leave. And so, if I am successful, Corvus is going to slip into their spore form, kind of turn into a stick, floop at the bottom, and then come back out right next to it. Uh, and then it's just gonna be like, you tie things as well as a young sapling who has maybe perhaps been hit with a rock twice. 
All right. So, um, uh, a couple of things. Uh, Ledger Main is palming. Um, so, uh, I will so, let you. So, do you want me to just like you succeed at this? Um, uh, I need to remember uh, in rage. And by the way, I forgot to tell our viewers something that's very important. We are using Green Ronin's Fantasy Age. System. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. It lets me do things like use. Which is awesome for a few things. Uh, one is that it is a, a very simple base system, which, say, if your GM gets sick and you need to quickly just make up an adventure, Sure, not that this is made up. No, no. If you were to make one up uh, on the spot, uh, it's a great base system for doing so. Two, it has something we love, which are stunts, which is what uh, Corvus has just discovered. If you roll doubles on your three dice, you have one special die that gives you a number, you have stunt points, and you have tables with stunts. And all gamers love stunts and tables. And tables. And the other thing we didn't mention is that uh, you can actually donate uh, to us so that our characters' special abilities come in into play. So um, we all have three levels, and uh, as we hit the $100 mark, each of our characters then gets access to do some really cool and fun stuff. With no repercussions. None. Yes. Not at all. And especially with Enrage, it says the person, the target, must either choose between leaving or attacking. Um, so, glad to know. This is going to go well. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be great, guys. All right, um, so a couple of things uh, with the giving. Uh, normally Lauren plays it, because she's not on the system, that um, if you if, if everybody gets them uh, enough, like one level, that she gets to use points. However, I, Lorenzo, am so fabulous that I, in fact, am on the system. So uh, I will simply use Lorenzo, my own abilities, um, should I hit that. Um, and I will decide, is it weal or woe for the uh, Skywatch trio? Uh, anyway, back to this. Uh, you do, in fact, uh, slip out. And because uh, you are deft and clever in it, um, the, the villagers haven't even realized it. They're busy arguing about what a unicorn looks like. Um, and you slip around, and you find yourself on the far side of this magistrate. Um, and you do what again? You I mean, say that? I would like to say that they're not tying as... That of a young sapling who has not fully matured. Yeah. A child, perhaps? I knew it was the unicorn. Everyone knows unicorns can't be tied up. Get her! Him! It! Uh, he swings wildly at you with a garden hoe. Hmm. Um, and just completely, uh, uh, probably, what's your, what's your defense? It's 14. Uh, yes, that would be a miss. Oh, yes. I, I would like to pull out my shotgun uh, and, like, aim it menacingly and just say, everyone calm down. All right. Uh, would you like to make a communication intimidate check? Sure. Uh, and I got stunt points off of that. Uh, and Do 10, 14. And my... Stump points. <laughs> I'm not going to use Enrage. Are you uh, sure? Although I'm telling... Uh, but uh, I am going to use Tower of Will. Uh, so I get uh, a sense of my own brilliance and strength of character, which will give me a plus one bonus to any opposed tests where I'm being put at an emotional disadvantage. He's got one of them arbicuses! Everyone get down! Uh, they all seem incredibly afraid of you and your um, your uh, boomstick. Well, now look, I'm sure this is something that can be settled peaceably. Now, uh, it seems like our uh, little tree person here was unaware of the customs of your people. Uh, if there is a debt that needs to be repaid, I'm sure uh, the Sky Watch can cover. Uh, is the Muffin Man here? Do you know the Muffin Man? Uh, I've not, I've not seen a Muffin Man, but the Muffin Widow is Widow Kale. But we don't want no Corvus muffins. Well, I would like to talk to the Widow, if I can. Well, she's pretty upset. I, I do well with upset women. All right, she's real mad though. All right. All right, dang it. Okay, I thought you were supposed to help us. 
We are, but you see, we believe in non-lethal violence. So we don't we don't just kill somebody. We believe in due process and a fair court system. We we help the helpless, and clearly this tree person has no abilities to with which to defend themselves, so. I'm going to go talk to the widow. I you will. watch yourself, and don't go taking anything that isn't yours. Why, you can't leave the Corvus with us. Okay. Who I, knows what, what it'll do next? I, I can walk the Corvus out to the edge of the forest. We'll deposit it in the brush. I, I will be okay. I appreciate the Sky Watch's such careful hands, but I'll be okay. You stay with him. Mind your manners. I go talk to the widow. All right. Come this way. She's pretty mad, though. Uh, he, 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 he leads you on uh, um, to uh, a, a small um, a cottage on the edge of town. Uh, you can tell there is a, a very large chimney, probably used for baking. Um, he uh, he just walks up and he opens the door and you see um, uh, uh, you as I said widow she seems to be about thirty two years old and uh, um, she's tied up in the chair. He's like, uh, well, we had to tie her up because well, you tied her up. She was tr- she she was ensorcelled by the Corvus and kept telling us we sh- we shouldn't burn her. I told you she was mad. Uh, Ada walks over and just unties uh, the widow. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so what I'm hearing is that this, so they, t- the townspeople tied you up. Yes, I found this young person in my kitchen. Uh, I screamed, uh, I was a little bit alarmed. Uh, they seem to be eating muffins and suddenly uh, this idiot shows up with his brothers, try to drag the kid out and tie me up when I try to stop them. <sighs> Who are you? Ada Blood with Skywatch. We saw that it had a- Skywatch? They had tied Corvus to some sort of stump they use for burning witches or whatnot. Oh, the burning stump, yes. <laughs> Now, not that I'm pro-witch, I've had some personal relationships, both positive and negative, with witch folk. And I would say the bad ones are really, really bad, but the good ones are really good. So, I'm neither a pro nor uh, anti-witch, but I do believe in a fair trial. Well, you're in the wrong town, if, if that's what you want. Everyone's all upset about this unicorn and the encampment and the woman who lives in the encampment. Well, we're here about the unicorn, but unfortunately we got waylaid by this rubbish. Um, I turn to uh, the judge and I say, you should have a rule against tying up women in their own homes. A rule against tying up women in their own homes. Can you give me a visual of what this judge looks like? Because I would like to, I, I'm he, pretty sure I have it. Is it like a Colonel Sanders? Um, like <laughs> a fat Colonel Sanders, but he's got more of a brown, like before Colonel Sanders uh, got old. Okay. Um, he's giant, he's got a giant mustache that looks like he like tried to curl it, mm. but the wax is just sort of dripped, oh, so it's no. just kind of messy. Um, and he hasn't shaved around it, so it looks- Oh God, okay. Yeah, it's just okay. kind of like scruff with, Messy mustache. But he had one time shaved it, so it's just like a different look. And you can like see like three days worth of meals like stuck in his mustache. That's 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 not a law. You can't come down here from the your big Mina city and tell us folk here how to run our lives. Actually, who appointed you? Are you appointed by the city government, or are you appointed by the townspeople? Well, the queen's people appointed someone who appointed someone who died and left the job to me. So, if you want to continue being a a city-state appointed judge, there's a few basic rules you have to follow. One, if you're in somebody's house and they tell you they want you to leave, or perhaps not tie them up. You have to do what they say. 
So no tying people up in their own homes. Tool. You need to have a fair and impartial. Oh, good God. I'm just going to have to get you a book. Uh, Listen, I can let you off with a ticket. A, a ticket? You'll need to appear 60 days from now in Mina at the high court. I can't go to Mina. I got I got pigs to take care of. Well, then you'll have to fi- uh, you'll have to pay the fine. Ooh, what's the fine? Well, <laughs> it's a hundred gold. A hundred gold and suspension of your office for three months. Ain't no one in the city seen a hundred gold. You know, we all got our money together and put it together. Ain't there nothing I can do? I'm real sorry. In sixty days, you can go before the high oh, court and meet it. <laughs> This is all that tree witch's fault. And the unicorn. And that weird woman out in the encampment. All right, tell me about the weird woman. Show me where she is. Oh, you want to know about her? Let's get out of this nice lady's home. Thank you. (laughs) I don't go anywhere alone with him. But you look like you can take care of yourself. Uh, I'm not alone with him. He's alone with me. Uh, maybe you should go somewhere alone with him. <laughs> um, okay, you you wander out. You notice uh, several of the villagers have been watching this happen. Uh, they kind of scurry away as they see you uh, walk away. Um, the two of you are dressed be- much better than almost anybody in this place. It seems pretty poor. Um, you get this feeling that maybe anyone with more wealth probably lives maybe on the other side of the river. Uh, oh. You see a couple of mansions there, but for the most part, there's not much uh, going on in this part. What is the city known for other than this giant wooden bridge? Like, what do they do? They have farms. What do they produce? What goods? It um, it is mainly a um, uh, these days mostly just a trading destination. Okay. They have some inns. Uh, they do have farm and agriculture with the river nearby. Um, but uh, boats travel down the river. Um, is from here you can actually see the ends of the cross. They're not just platforms. They have stairs that go down to docks along the river. So um, it's very defensible, and yet the uh, river kind of travels through a canyon. Um, that's deep enough for boats to travel on. So it's a very good trade destination. While all this is going on, uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to holster my gun again, and uh, I'll like, I'll I'll just ride up to Corvus, uh, and I'll extend a hand, and I'll say, um, now, now, there, little little tree person, you you wouldn't hurt a fly now, would you? No. <sighs> All right. Well, you must have just gotten lost and uh, wandered out of the forest. So... I know you, you tree people, you're, you're, you're very, uh, you cling to your habitat and you're not. Have you ever met a, a tree person? Or more or less, I, I would say. I've like, um, I've hollered out to one in the past maybe. And, uh, and I've, I've seen a, I've seen y'all around. But we we come out very rarely. We don't. We prefer to stay in there just because these things occur. Can you show me that thing that you were holding? You you mean my shotgun? <laughs> yes. Well, uh, you can look at it if you I like. I would like to do that. All right. Well, see this here. Uh, and I I pull out my shotgun and she can see it. Can you uh, tell me about all of those things? All of them? There, Tell me about every just, little bit of the... There's just the one thing. It's How the, does it work? Well, uh, I mean, it's got a, it's got a, a shaft, a barrel, a muzzle, a trigger, and uh, and the shells that I put in from this here bandolier, they, uh, they just l- launch really fast out of it. And uh, So it's used for... Further away combat is what you're saying. Well, it's used for keeping the peace, which is what Skywatch does. Could you hit that thing over there? Completely opposite of where I'm standing. Well, I mean, I absolutely could, but that's not why we're here. Okay, so I'm here 
to, in order to escort you back to the forest where you belong. But yes, I could, for the no, record. No. I could hit something. You would do it if you five, could. Well, no, I mean, I've... Okay, okay, okay. So what? by the way, I'm just, like, what? just so that, don't listen. Just so that you know, I'm waiting for an opportunity to rifle through pockets. Oh. I'm waiting. I rolled, I got some stunt points. Which gives me an upper hand, and um... Why don't you make a perception check? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't know if you get to just roll against me and <laughs> have stun points because you feel like it. I would like to just steal from your pockets. <laughs> I'm, I'm perceiving right now, correct? That's what you said? No, that's, that's uh, tested. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so with sight anyway, uh, I get 13. Um, this, uh, Corvus is behaving oddly and definitely, like, staring at your things. Yeah. Um, well, and those uh, at you. You're, you're probably, you just never done seen any, anything from the civilized world now, have you? Hey. No, I've never. Do you want to hold a bullet? <laughs> I mean, yes. And, like, just so everyone knows, this Corvus is very... I would consider Corvus Twiggy. This one is like all twigs, no branches. Like the skinniest pole beam. I'm using that phrase now. All, all twigs, no branches. Yeah, it's like the, the longest, like all the height without the, the build. So you were saying uh, like skinnier than as a Corvus that... Yeah, like, yeah. Like still kind of figuring out their height. Like awkwardly standing. Now I'll... Her hair. I'll, Half of it falls over. I'll let you hold this here bullet, but you gotta you gotta agree to walk with me back to the forest. These aren't the forests I'm from. Well, forest is a forest. No. Like Suddenly, saying... as you say this, <laughs> uh, you hear a. Um, go ahead and make a perception check, both of you. What kind? Uh, seeing. If you have um, any like special perception, 14. feel free to do that instead. Ten. Fourteen and ten. Um, you. Uh, there it is. Uh, Carvis, you see what looks like a horse. Um, Tustin, you see the horse as well, but you uh, notice that it has a single like gleaming uh, uh, horn upon its head. Hold oh. one. Um, and it rears up in front of the setting sun. Uh, you sort of see it, and oh, it shakes its head. Sun's still out? I'm sorry. And its, uh, its mane kind of waves, and you notice it is like all different colors in its mane. Holy crap, unicorn! Wait, what's oh. that? Well, it's what I'm here to actually go after. Look, here's what I need you to do. I need you to go find the person that I was with. I need you to tell them that I'm gone after the unicorn, send her in the direction I am, and then go back to the forest and not cause any trouble. You think you can do that? All right. I mean, of course. Great. Uh, and I bolt on after the unicorn. Um, yes, as, as uh, Corvus leaves, the unicorn runs, and you follow after. Um, would you like to make a... Um, I'm going to say running is strength, I believe. Oh, I'm on my horse. horse. Oh, you, that's right. Oh, you do have your Isn't horse. Isn't that animal handling? Mm. Isn't that a skill? Yeah, I'm not sure if that's communication or is that... I think it's communication. Um, I do not have time to look it up, so <laughs> let's say it that's is... Cool. You can choose dexterity or... Sweet. Um, dexterity if you want to kind of force the horse or communication if you want to coax the horse. Uh, well, I nice. got... 12, 15, 19, uh, and six stunt points, too. Ooh. So uh, let's do, uh, uh, let's do that with uh, the upper hand, which will give me an initiative bonus if this leads to any con combat in the immediate future. Uh, for the next 10 minutes, uh, Tustin chases the unicorn into the forest. They, like, they, like, are side by side here and there as the unicorn will get ahead, but then Corvus will, like, ride his horse up a log and, like, leap. Tustin? Tustin, sorry. <laughs> Tustin will ride his horse up a log and sort of leap, um, and end up in front of the horse. Um, 
Uh, Corvus, as you see uh, Tustin ride off with such magnificence, you think, I my, I would love to own a horse myself one day. This is my first time seeing a four-legged horse. I, I hope someday <laughs> I am lucky enough to own a horse. Yeah. <laughs> this is so great. Um, horse anyway, um, uh, uh, Tustin, you do, um, you do manage to... Uh, um, uh, eventually you get a sort of around the unicorn and you sort of circle about. It seems alarmed but fairly calm. So I'm sort of wondering what our mission is as far as the unicorn goes. Are we trying to trap it? Are we trying to kill it? Are we trying to generally like, bring it spirits somewhere? are somewhat uncontrollable and they if there is a spirit in the kingdom, you uh, unicorns are not like something that any like you've heard of them maybe, but you've been uncertain if um, like it is a even a real thing. Um, some spirits are very dangerous. They prey on people. Some maybe help Helpful or harmless, even the helpful ones maybe cause problems. So it's your job. To, it's kind of up to you to make a decision on what needs to be done. Um, but so the unicorn is a trouble troublemaking spirit that I'm basically here to right to uh, get rid of one way or the it other. It might be. Imagine if you were in a world without magic and you were a ranger, right? And like a bear was eating people's food. Like you don't want to say kill the bear. So do I do I have it trapped right now, or is it? Am I just like sort of running alongside um, it? It or? seems um, to be the. Um, it seems to have kind of given up on running away from you. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems fairly defensive. Um, Has this unicorn been? Um, is is it that the townspeople are scared of it, or is it that it's actually like eating their crops and running amok and like causing them worry? So far, all you've heard that seems reliable. Um, well, let's cut to you, Ada. Yeah. Um, you're kind of in the town still. Yeah, I'm at I'm at the pub and I'm asking people about this unicorn or this horse, and I'm like, so, what's the deal with this horse? Oh, uh, the, the the you mean the unicorn? <laughs> Uh, sure. I've never seen a unicorn, so I can't really say if that's what it is, but that's what we've been hearing reports about. A young, a young man, you would guess, like maybe 17 or 18. He's uh, fairly muscular, probably, um, you guess maybe a like blacksmith's apprentice. He has a lot of muscles, he's wearing a leather and an apron. Um, he says, well, uh... uh I mean, no one's really gotten a good look at it, but some of the, the, the girls who live on the outside of the farms, the, they said it showed up and it just kind of looked at them um, and then it's run off into the woods. So, a unicorn's been appearing to girls who live in, on the outskirts and it's been watching them and then retreating back into the forest. Yep. My pa thinks it's trying to lure him into the woods. But I don't know, it just seems like it's confused to me from the sound of it. Well, um, I don't suppose you could direct me to any of these girls I might speak with. Uh, oh gosh, yeah, I'd be happy to go with you. All right then. Um. Lead the way. Hold on a second. I know just the one. Um, you see him kind of brush his hair in the place. Seems to be trying to neaten up. Oh. He's like, all right. <laughs> now, Gwen, she lives out on the west side of town. And she's the one I trust the most. She's real smart. Um, I mean, she, she runs a farm, but she pretty much runs it for her pa. If anyone knows anything, she would. She sounds real nice. Yeah, I better take you there, though. All right. All right. Maybe you can give me an introduction with her. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Sure. Um, I appreciate you being so brave. Oh, well, shucks, lady. I don't mind. You must you must go to a lot of fancy places. <laughs> yeah, I guess I do. But I'm not always there in the most fanciest of aspects. Yeah, you ever, you've been, you're from Mina? I am, yeah. I hear they got like dances like every night there. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I suppose they do, but you know, 
Not everybody's at every dance every night. You might get to go to one maybe months, once a month. Well, I'd kill just to go to one dance. We don't, we got a county dance every once in a while, but most of the people around here get too drunk on me before they even get to the dancing. Well, that's too bad. Yeah, I always thought it'd be fun. Anyway, he kind of leads you through the town. You know, I have a son just a little bit older than me. <gasps> what? <laughs> really? Well, well, what does he do? His name's William and he's a student. A student named William? Huh. That sounds like a good guy. Some follow-up questions. <laughs> are, um, they, are they Tustin? Of course, you arrive. You notice he yeah. gets more and more nervous as so as there. they um, as you get close. He's like, "My name's Peter, by the way." All right, Peter. Nice to meet you. I'm Ada Blood. That's a scary name. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> All right, here she is. Now uh, you you better wait and let me answer. Her paws mighty fierce. Okay. He, he walks up. He knocks on the door. Um, and, uh, you sort of hear him loudly be like, uh, Gwen, I've, um, I brought my friend, uh, the, my friend Ada Blood, who's in Skywatch. I brought her here to maybe help with your unicorn problem, because I thought, you know, you could use some help, and I heard you had trouble with that, and, uh, uh, After a minute, he kind of motions you in. Um... You enter, it's a very small house. Um, you see a Gwen, young woman, like strawberry blonde hair, um, fairly simple dress. Um, make a make a perception check. All right. Oh, it's an empathy check, if you have that. Oh, wow. Uh, six. Not, you're not em- empathetic. Not today, I'm not. Six. Um, sh- you get the feeling she's drunk. Oh no. Um, she's like, oh, hi. Hi. My name's Ada Blood. I'm with Skywatch. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm here um, because some people were reported to us that there was a unicorn, and so we've come to investigate. Oh, well, I, I did see the unicorn. Um, can we talk? Um, uh, pa, do you mind if I talk to this woman outside? Um, <laughs> he eventually is like, mm, he looks you up and down. He's like, all right, I don't see the harm in it. You walk outside. Um, Peter, uh, or Peter stays inside. Okay. She says, I, I did see the unicorn twice now out in the fields. Is this unicorn bothering you or causing your farm any trouble? Not really, but it worries us all the same. I think... The woman to the west. I think she's somehow related to it. The woman to the west? Yes, who set up the tents. It's about uh, an hour's ride to the west, but you can see it uh, because it's down on the plains. What is this unicorn doing when you see it? He just appears. He seems to look at me. He seems, I don't know, lost or confused. Like he's expecting something else to be there. How does it make you feel when you see the unicorn? I... I think it's beautiful. But I worry too. My pa thinks we should hire someone, hunt it down and kill it. That must be why you're here. They sent for help? Well, we don't arbitrarily kill magical beasts. Um... But we do want to understand what's going on. If, if it's lost, we could try to return it to its home. You know, we do relocation of uh, magical creatures quite often. Well, you're, you're friends with Peter, right? Mm-hmm. I can trust you. Yeah. I snuck away uh, a few days ago to see this, this woman down in the encampment. Her name's Katrina. She's very smart. She's a, a researcher of some sort, and she's she's been digging in the ground. Any idea what she uncovered? Uh, she said she's looking for artifacts uh, from, uh, like, maybe back even during the Great Spirit War. She says this place used to be a place of, of great magic. 
uh, a center of learning, but that that things have moved on and time has passed and it's all been lost. She says by digging, she can find answers, maybe. But do you think she maybe dug something up she shouldn't have dug up? Well, that's what the people here would say, but the people here would rather things not change. They'd, they'd rather us just keep on going the way we have been and not learn anything or have anything change. I had a run in a uh, little bit ago with your judge. Oh, the magistrate? Yes. He doesn't seem to understand law. People here don't understand anything. How can you understand law if you can't read? All right, well, is there anything else I need to know about the unicorn? Only, please don't hurt it. It, I have the feeling it means well. All right. I'll see what I can do. Can't make any promises, but usually with things like this, we don't have to just kill the beast. Um, all right, cut back to Dustin. Uh, the unicorn seems um, a bit angry you followed it. Uh, it seems fairly defensive. All right. And it begins to point its horn toward you. I have a background in ranching, and I've <laughs> dealt with animals before. Oh, good. It's not it's fine. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm city whoa. folk. I'm going to give it, like, the full, <laughs> like, Matthew McConaughey. Are you going to get like, off it and, like, turn a pet its nose? Yeah, like... so I, I dismount my horse. I reach into my pocket slowly. I pull out, we brought with some gumdrops, which we know are unicorns, like perfect unicorn bait. It's their favorite food. <laughs> Make an intelligence check. Magical lore, if you want. Uh, 11, 13. 13? Yeah. All right, you hold the gumdrops <laughs> out. Um, uh, the unicorn looks at it for a minute, and then it stabs its horn at your hand. Um, do you make a defense roll? Yeah, well, my defense is 14, so... Oh, right, right, sorry. <laughs> I need to make the... Hold on. Um, uh, it stabs you in the hand, uh, right through the hand. Uh, this is not... This is not how no, you have tell, me about, tell me about your ranching experience again. <laughs> um, for eight damage. Wow. Okay. Um, and the gumdrops float out of your hand and into its mouth. And it, it's, the <laughs> horn is actually through your hand right now. It's stabbed all the way through. <laughs> okay, so... Whoa. So um, I've see, lost... You're holding so out. The I'm, horn is holding, through. Right. Hopefully um, with your non-dominant hand. You non gun shooting hand? Shoot uh, bullet. Well no, it's my it's my definitely my uh, six shooter hand. Uh, and it's my trigger hand for oh, uh, hand. it eats the gumdrops and then it just sits there and it holds its horn in your hand. Alright. <laughs> Made a lot of pain. Alright. We have not got off to the best start. But I think we can make this work. And I'm going to slowly, <laughs> gently reach out and try to pet its nose. Um, it, uh, as you reach out, uh, make a um, communication check. <laughs> Ten. Ten, uh, you startle it and it, it shakes, <laughs> uh, dealing... Uh, four more damage to your oh, hand. Um, I'm not gonna have a hand after this. <laughs> I'm not giving up on this beautiful beast. Um, and it, um, uh, and then, uh, after a minute, it, um, accepts the pet. Oh, great. <laughs> Are we making progress? I can't really tell. Um, yes, it seems to be holding you there with its <laughs> piercing through your okay. hand, but it's accepting the pet. I continue. It's just. I continue to gently pet it, and I say. You get the feeling there. it's like um, it's like getting the gumdrops out of its teeth. Right. Oh, it's great. Like there, there, there. You just, you just wound up in a bad spot, like just like Sam did. But it's okay. I'm gonna. 
I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna make sure you don't end up like Sam. Um, gonna, it looks up. It's fairly gentle with you. When it looks up, does it roll its eyes up? It looks or? you right in the <laughs> eyes. And you I... <laughs> you suddenly are reminded of all the times you made love, if you have, which is how many times? <laughs> You're asking me? Uh, let's, let's say three. Uh, three, you think of all the times you made love. Do you feel guilty about any of the times? Uh, no, I don't think Tustin feels guilty about any of them. Um, so he looks you straight in the eye for a minute, and then he uh, removes his horn. As he does so, you feel um, a, uh, a sort of magical aura of healing, and you heal seven points. Ah, huh. that brings me back up to full. As a hole in your hand disappears, um, and he looks at you for a minute, and then he starts to turn as if he's going to leave. I, uh, I say, hey, 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 now. Now, look, uh, it's not safe for you out there yet. Look, I'm done. I'm done with my old life. I know. I know what it's like out there. I can keep an animal like you safe. I'm. I'm gonna be your partner from now on. We're. We're just gonna ride away from all of this together. Just you. You and me. He look. Uh, he looks at your horse. Your horse looks at him, and your horse seems kind of pissed off. <laughs> I, don't don't pay him no mind. He's he's a Skywatch horse. I'll we'll return him. We'll return him to my my former soon to be former partner Ada. She'll lead him back to Skywatch no oh, problem, and we'll we'll be able to start our new life together. Uh, Just unicorn and and his best friend. Uh, make a uh, communication persuasion check. Dice don't fail me now. Oh, uh, 15 and six stunt points. Uh, Enrage, do it, just do it! <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm flirting. Uh, yeah, I'm totally flirting with the unicorn. Uh, so I have to make a communication seduction versus its willpower self-discipline. Oh. I wish we still had thumper dice. Oh, that's so good. Did I tell you that mm. one of my friends, his most notable moment is that he tried to ride a dragon and died? Not in real life, of course. Oh, good. yeah. <laughs> We're gonna stick a pin Wait, in that. You had a friend who tried to ride a dragon? <laughs> But yes, I thought that was super helpful for this moment. Uh, eleven. Um, y- your uh, the unicorn seemed to be taken by your first speech more than this attempt to flirt with it. Um, it seems more amused than upset. Uh, it thinks for a minute and then it turns south and west and leaps and it flies up into the sky and it leaves like a, a bit of a, like a light in every color behind it. No, Jimmy! Jimmy, we... And you see as he we flies were into the just air, beginning. He, he kind of fades away, um, uh, but you get a sense of his presence all around you. Do I do I think that he's, like, just turned invisible, or do I think that he's... You think that probably, yes, he is um, either turned invisible or taken some other form. Jimmy, I've... I didn't know until to this day, but I've been waiting for you my whole life, and I can wait a little longer. And I sit down in the forest on the grass. Uh, all right. Um, meanwhile, Corvus, has uh, you have returned to town? I I would like to admit that I I would. Did I catch a glimpse of the other Skywatch member before they went to the house? Or did I go all the way to the Muffin House, get lost, <laughs> just wander around in the place that wanted to kill me? I feel like I'm a little bit smarter than that. Um, I think you, um, uh, well, uh, make a perception check. That was good. This was good. Uh... 13, 15, 15. 15? 
Um, you, uh, you, as you approach the town, I imagine you are fairly careful. Um, and you overhear two, uh, uh, two boys. One of them's like, yeah, Peter took her to, took her to Gwen's house. Mm, oh, yeah. Yeah. They're like talking it up. They're like, yeah, he's got the, he's really into her. He's probably going to try to take her to the county dance. I mean, Gwen, not the, not the lady. Which lady? Uh, Curtis is you're going pretty to the sure conversation. That, you're pretty sure they're talking about Ada. Okay, then I'm just going <sighs> to... They're like, they gesture enough, you get a general idea okay, of where okay. the house probably is. Um, I give I, them, I come from, pull from my cloak. I imagine by the time are, you arrive, oh. Ada, you're probably just finishing up. Right. You lost your son. Oh, you mean Tustin. The one with the, with the gun. He is not my son. Oh. He's we my... So I think of him as my protege. <laughs> um, why are you by yourself? I was told to bring you to the forest. <sighs> you know, that's a good question. Why did I just not leave? I, he went to go chase these horse that <gasps> ran into the forest. No, not by himself. Do you have another protege? Which way did he go? <laughs> Let me show you. All right. Come with me. Yeah. I'm not letting you out of my sight. Uh, do you have any kind of tracking skill? Uh, I have natural lore. I have arcane detection. Nice. Can um, we both roll? Yes, both of you roll. Wow, that was the worst roll I ever had. Uh, 12. 10. With an exploration of the object of your attention, which I would like to continue to try to find the unicorn. All right, um, you uh, you find you like the grass here is bent. You can see that something has passed here. See this broken blade? And Ada, you are like, yes, there are cattle right here that um, knocked that grass over. Um, but it is enough to uh, kind of get you set in the right direction um, once you orient yourself. Um, Ada, you, um, you do see, uh, um, the residue both of, um, uh, you kind of recognize at this point Tustin's magical signatures. He tends to leave magical casings about as he, as he run, as he, uh, rides around, especially at that speed. You eventually find your way through the forest. It probably takes an hour or two. Um, and we, you come across, uh, Tustin, who is... Uh, I'm sitting cross-legged. Uh, my my eyes are closed uh, until I'll hear the sound of them approaching and I'll open them. If you didn't know better, you would say his horse seemed pissed off at him. <laughs> Shh. Um, he'll be back. Still, are still you here. kidding me? Have you really been waiting here in the forest for a unicorn? Oh, I've been more than waiting. He's he's my new best friend and partner. I'm leaving Skywatch, Ada. I told you I would. And I found out what I found out what I'm gonna do with my life. This this poor innocent creature of the forest needs my protection. Together we're we're going to roam around the whole country. Forest it is impossible for spirits and the humans to be compatible. Unlike the tree, which is a permanent home to the spirits, humans are just too terrible to be able to work with the spirit's strength. So your guys' pairing would never fly. Y'all are that Corvus thing. Good, good for you for returning to the forest like I told you. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> really, really great. Um, All right. I don't know what kind of 
uh, infatuation you have with this unicorn, but you've got a perfectly good horse over there that looks very hurt by what you've said. Damn it, Ada, this unicorn. It needs our protection. The people in that this village are going to hunt it to I know that, but why aren't you talking it? Look, I've got a lead. It's here. It's it's around us somewhere in the forest. It it went invisible on us. All right, boys, you heard him. They're in cahoots with the unicorn. Oh, goody, goody, goody. You hear the familiar voice of the uh, magistrates uh, echo out, and out of the darkness uh, steps the magistrate. He's wearing uh, very old-looking armor that is not entirely put on correct. He's got a cudgel in his hand, um, and he has uh, uh, two pretty strong-looking kind of thuggish uh, um, men with him. They both have, like, uh, badges on their chest that look like they made it them, them themselves. Is that one of my... Oh, Tony. Tony. Yes. Uh, who <laughs> okay. is this, Tony? I... Lorencio. Lorencio. Yes. The sun, well, is obviously setting, correct? It's dark correct. now. Next up... <sighs> The sky has changed, correct? There's now a sigil in the sky? Mm. Yes, the Friday sigil. I believe it has been in the sky all day, but, no, but now it is more I'm obvious. I'm level one. Can I do my thing? Ah, uh, yes. <gasps> you you may. Uh, sorry, I had forgotten okay. to look at this. No, I, I was reminded. Uh, your sigil, the sigil of death, uh, which yes. I believe is Saturday. Yes. Uh, so I lights up behind you. Immediately, just turn into the spores and just drift and hide among the shadows. I can move swiftly and south. So the two of you see as this guy steps out. Your companion just poof bursts into a cloud of some slipped. sort. Well, well, I'll be. I, I ain't never seen one of them do that before. I'd like to be able to do that. I think you all better roll initiative. Awesome. As these. You know, this seem is, clearly willing uh, to attack. Gah. This is not good. Really? Yeah. Uh, this is dream come true for me. Okay. I'm ready when you are. At least my dexterity is high. Seven? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 18. Dexterity. 18? Mm-hmm. Eight. Eight. Um, all right, just to set the scene, um, this is sort of, a, it's a clear enough area. It was clear enough for two horses and Tustin to sit on the ground. Um, however, all around seem to be like logs overturned. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, sort of uh, one of the, uh, the thuggish people is actually up on, the, on one of the logs. He's holding a crossbow in his hand. The other has an old rusty sword. The magistrate has a very large sort of club, like cudgel. It's got some uh, like iron, iron uh, uh, looks like kind of spikes jammed into it. Um, uh, Corvus, you uh, in cloud form get to go first. <laughs> yeah. I the, the the spore cloud just moves and flinks and is going to see the one who is standing on the log. That tree's mightier than that person. They should not be standing on that glorious carcass of a tree. And I'm going to take out my dagger and just stab it like right in that spot, right underneath so their can you, can you explain this uh, ability of yours uh, yeah, that's been so, unlocked by the thumpers? Uh, my level one gives me the ability to like just slip into the darkness and join with it in the spore form, which means I can like become incorporeal to sneak around. So it, what it does is it gives me a bonus to my sneak tricks, yes. which means I'm already sneaking, which means I can stab for much larger yes. <laughs> amounts. Yes. And so I'm just going to be like, like slinking around, just stabbing things. It's not going to be like I'm yeah. there. So like, out of the, so the spores swirl around them, mm -hmm. imagine, and they form into a bit of a corvus, a more material corvus yes. right behind this guy. Um, go ahead and make, uh, I think because of the ability, we'll just say he's surprised. He's yes. certainly not expecting this. Yes. It's okay, guys. Probably. Nine. 
13 and I stunt. This is the, this is the uh, thirteen. Um, you do. You do land your oh, blow. Oh, wow. okay. Um, I'm gonna do. I got five. Uh, two yeah. stun points. That's gonna do a knock prone. So my entire goal was to stab right in the kneecap so that the person is prone and off that log. Okay. We'll roll your damage first, which is sneak damage. Two, four, nine. I rolled very low, but. Nine. Um, you stab him in his leg. He seems to have some leather there that helps take part of it. You still stab him, um, and I believe you do knock him prone. Um, oh, he slips and he lands like both his legs on either side of the log, and he really jams himself in the um, in the family spirits, <laughs> and uh, kind of slides over and falls to the ground. Um, he's he's still conscious and. Uh, he does drop his crossbow, though. Excellent. Uh, I have a minor left. Can I do a move back into the shadows? Um, I will say yes this time. But, <laughs> but uh, normally you cannot move, no. attack, move. Oh, oh, that's right. Thank you. I can, I can be yes. there in spores. No, since you oh. had the the ability, cool. I'll let that be your first okay. choice of where to appear. Um, all right. Um. Seeing that, the magistrate, um, uh, he was sort of humiliated by Ada, so he swing, he steps toward you and swings at you. Mm-hmm. Um, you were not surprised, so you get your defense. Uh, what is your defense? Eleven. Eleven? Um, uh. He just misses. His uh, spike clings off of his armor, and uh, he spits at you. Um, uh, Tustin. Y'all are bothering Jimmy. And I pull out my shotgun. Uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to kill or anything like that, but uh, I'm gonna, the magistrate that attacked uh, Ada, uh, I'm going to fire one of my lightning uh, rounds at him. So uh, that'll give a negative two to his next action if it lands. Right. Uh... Ooh, I'm not rolling well. Three, five, no, you're not. six, twelve might still be enough. Uh, twelve is a magistrate. Yeah. Um, and that's lightning. It's still is it? Um, is it piercing damage or is it? No, it's it'll be regular damage. It's just there will be an added effect if it succeeds. Yes. Um, you rolled twelve. Uh, yes, actually that does hit. All right, then it does. Uh, seven, thirteen damage. Thirteen uh, damage. Yeah. All right. Um, his armor takes some of the damage away, and then you said the effect is also... So on his next turn, whatever action he does, he'll have a negative two to that. All right. Um, excellent. Um, the lightning hits him. The entire forest lights up for a minute with the sparks, um, and uh, they seem alarmed and surprised by it. It's unicorn magic! Um, Ada. Um, I approach the magistrate and I say, lower your weapons and surrender. Um, go ahead and make a communicate persuade. I'm, I'm asking him, uh, as my minor. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Well, you still do the communicate persuade to see. Okay. Um, uh, five. Uh, five? He seems, he looks offended that you even asked. Surrender. To a woman? Oh. Okay, well. (laughs) So much for negotiating. Uh, yes. That's your minor? Are you taking a major action? Well, well, if, I mean, if I rolled, I don't, is that my minor then? Sure. Okay. Uh, then I, uh, Ada is not happy with his, uh, misogynistic, uh, <laughs> comment. She, uh, has worked very hard to be a good and, uh, faithful member of Skywatch, include a lot of, of, um, you know, testing, like having to take a couple classes, and, uh, she really cares about justice, so this really bothers her. Um, she so she just, seminar. like, uh, after she's... 
Sorry, I'm just waiting. I was waiting that entire time for my die to stop. Spinning. It was amazing. I felt like it was haunted or something. Um, the unicorn, guys. Um, <laughs> it's an obsession. So like, it is a dream. Ah! Ah! Um, so, and again, she's very flustered and doesn't do well. She only it rolls a nine. Uh, nine? I'm afraid you miss. Um, your blade goes wild and he laughs as your blade, like, it... It slides in front of his mustache, but fails to even cut off a single hair. Oh, does he laugh at me? Yes. <laughs> his breath is foul. It is berserk. <laughs> well, that's new. Is that a thing? <laughs> is that a thing? Yep. Wait, like, did we know that? Like, was that a... You do now. Um, <laughs> the, uh, um, the second thug, um, seems alarmed by your guns and tries to stab you with his sword. Uh, he reaches out a little bit awkwardly, but uh, what's your defense? 14. 14 uh, manages to land a, a bit of a stab in you. Mm. Um, he um, also knocks you back about uh, a yard, a meter, a God. unit. Um, uh, sorry, two yards. He knocks yes. you back two yards, and he deals uh, 16 damage. Holy shit! Which obviously mitigated by your armor. 16? Uh, my armor is three, so that's still 13 damage. Yes. Uh, so I'm down to uh, math, math. It's hard, isn't it? I got him! I got him! Uh, that was the one with the sword, right? Yeah. Um, the one down on the ground uh, uh, spends this time standing up and picking up his crossbow. That makes sense. Um, and loading it. <laughs> I think he can do. Um, but that's it. That's all he can do this turn. Corvus. Uh, seeing the magistrate, the one who has decided that Corvus should be burned, I would like to... Oh, just stab him as well. Uh walk behind him, and like, I will leave my dagger in him because I will have no more miners, and that will be okay with me. <laughs> All right, so you'll stab. I'm looking for like, gut shot. Like, I'm going for like, ruin his body for permanence. Okay. Uh, this is a surprise attack, I believe. Yeah. It's again out of your cloud of thumper Fifteen. spores. Uh, Fifteen? Uh, you do, in fact, hit. Roll damage, and is there any other effect to this? Ugh. Um, no, but it does mean I always get my extra dice because I'm, I'm yes. stealth. Well, he's gonna know where I am now. Uh, seven, but a little bit extra. I had my accuracy, right? You had your perception. Oh, that's right, okay, cool. Two, seven, nine, plus another one. 10. Okay. Tim, um, you stab him right in the guts, uh, and uh, you feel you feel like um, you feel something warm on your hands. It almost feels like hot grease as his blood pours out on on, on your hands, um, and his insides smell like even worse than his outsides. Wow. Good. Actually, it's strength. Oh. Um, he looks injured, but it does not stop him from, um, uh, are you solid? I'm not right behind him. Like, I will keep my, I'm preparing for a pullback stab right in the same uh, spot. He turns around and tries to hit you with his uh, club of okay. spikes. Um, what's your defense? Uh, 14. Uh, he does hit you. <sighs> mm. For uh, 12 damage. Oof. Oh. It hurts. It definitely hurts. <laughs> and it is uh, your turn, Tustin. Oh, I'm I'm very pissed off at this person who just took a chunk of flesh out of me. Uh, I've got one more shell in my shotgun. I'm going to uh, enchant an ice. Uh, basically, a, I, it's going to freeze over it with ice uh, as I fire it from the gun. Uh, 6, 10, 12. Nice. Uh, hang on, plus six is 18. So, assuming that hits, yeah. 
Uh, uh, yes, it does hit. All right, then the effect of the ice will be that he cannot move from his spot uh, for one turn, uh, and it does nine damage. Um, you uh, you hit him. Uh, the ice freezes his his fat legs to the ground. However, he slumps over also from the damage, um, and he just sort of hangs there, bleeding out of his belly, um, frozen in the ice. Um, oh, looking unconscious. Well, and uh, dying. I hope I hope Jimmy doesn't mind the blood on his in his special area here. Uh, Ada, you are berserk. Uh, there are two kind of thugs left. Uh, they look nervous, but are still armed. One of them just stabbed Preston. Yeah, one has a crossbow, one has a sword. Oh, we've taken care of the... Magistrate. Oh, that was what you That was the magistrate you just shot, right? I was meaning to shoot the guy who who had the sword. Um, well, let me recalculate. It's all right. Time moves backwards. The magistrate stands back up. The ice melts. (laughs) Um, it hits the thug. Uh, did you hit the crossbow one or the sword one? The sword one. Um, uh, my intent is to keep him from being able to hit me back. Sorry, he is, uh, frozen in the ground. Uh, he cannot hit you because he knocked you two yards back. And, uh, um, he looks injured, but is still standing. Mm. Oh! Uh, I can't feel my you-know-what! I feel like the magistrate might be easy pickings at this point. <laughs> uh, Ada. Um, Ada uh, takes the look at, let's see, magistrates, yeah, laughed at her. Um, so uh, she <laughs> uh, does the whole, like, the sword in her hand and, like, Tries to punch him in the face. They'll knock him. All right. I guess it'd be an improvised weapon. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. 14. 14. Or I guess a punch, maybe. Uh, you do hit. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what damage your punch does. Uh, it's unarmed, so it's... Um... I'm berserk, so it's just four damage. I just did not roll very well. Four damage? Uh, you hit him in his stupid mustache, and because of all the grease in it, it like is all pointed this way now. Um, yeah. And you like uh, you you feel like you break his nose, Aww. so some blood like pours into it. So it's just like a big nasty greasy like asymmetrical bloody mess now. Um, he looks really upset at you for that. Um, and I say, do you give up? Um, the, uh, the ice thug says, like, I do. Oh, thank you very much. The other thug shoots you with his crossbow. Uh, but, uh, what's your defense? Eleven. Completely misses. Like, it just goes with the tree, and he, uh, kind of hides it behind his back. Like, maybe she won't notice. Um, York, Corvus. Um, I'm just going to take... I like that I get to be the gross one. This is nice. <laughs> in Shadowrun, I had to be the nice one. Now I get to be the mean one. You weren't supposed to be the nice one in Shadowrun. No. That was... That was your choice. That was you. <laughs> so happy. I would like to take my dagger and drag it as far as I can through ribs, through uh. anything I can. Just... <laughs> Oh, I get this. I'm in the magistrate. Then my my dagger is like stabbed in the stomach. Okay, so you. I just assume that is a continuing slice. Thing. Yep, just make another attack. Uh, um, this one might not hit. hit. Uh, it is only a twelve. And that's a hit. <laughs> okay. His his old armor is kind of weighing him down. Uh, I assume that I don't get my stealth bonus. Cause... No, he's pretty. I'm pretty certain he does you <laughs> there with your knife in his stomach. Uh, five. Five damage. Uh, you do stab him. Uh, you kind of cut him open, and he like and he, he kind of faints from the. Uh, uh, I want to be very clear. From the I pain. am definitely trying to kill this person. This um, is not non. Yes, but, uh, but you've not done enough, enough damage Great. to kill him. He is now dying and laying on the Great. ground. At this point, the other two thugs uh, seem upset and like they're they're like. 
the one who can move is starting to kind of try to creep away. The one in ice is like, don't, don't, don't leave me, Johnny. Drop your sword. And oh. Corvus stand down. He throws a sword to the ground. Look, we just, he, he just put us up to it. You're, you're going to go back to the town, tell everyone there that the unicorn ain't, ain't no trouble and ain't going to trouble you again. You understand that? Well, yeah, I guess, but I don't think that's true. That do are we gonna get into a debate over this? Why why don't you believe that to be the case? Well, cause Magistrate Clyde's the one who more more like Mag- dead dead magistrate. Magistrate Clyde's going back to Mina to stand trial for attacking members of Skywatch. So you're gonna ta- you're gonna take him back to Mina. You're not bringing him back into the village. <laughs> Listen, you may need to make a decision right now. Who is side you're on? Oh, I'm not on his side. We I hope you're like on the him. side of the town. I hope that you seem to have a sense of responsibility to the town. Oh yeah, I got real civic duty, lady. Real, I'm going to go plant a community farm. Look, just, you're, you're, you're going to take him, right? He's oh, going to stay here. I, I'll give you on my honor. I'm going to, oh, wait, are you talking about the magistrate or the Yeah, you're going to take him oh, back to yeah, me. Yeah, no, Adel will handle him. We'll leave him here. But no, okay. That's real good. That's what you should do. All right, well, thank you. I'm going to tell everyone. If I hear anything else about you or your little buddy there terrorizing strangers or bullying townsfolk or anything like that, I'll be back for you. All right. Thanks for letting us go. Come on. They both, like, run off uh, through the woods. They're both, like, scrambling, grabbing their stuff. Um, They seem like they cannot get away fast enough. The moment they're gone, I'm calling out, Jimmy, Jimmy, you still here? Listen, when when I talked to Peter, he said there was a lady named Katrina who was uh, about an hour's ride from town that uh, was setting up a little bit of a dig for magical artifacts. As you say, uh, as you say, Jimmy, uh, by the way, uh, make a um, uh, make everyone make a perception check. Am I doing arcane detection or just... Yeah, go ahead and do arcane detection. Nine. Uh, what kind of perception? Arcane lore, if you have it, or detection. Uh, uh, 15. 12, and I stunted. Around the time he says, Jimmy, you um, you see a glow come from the magistrate who's still laying there, like, coughing and dying. Like, Someone's trying to There seems to, to be some sort of, uh, like, on his belt... Um, so, yeah, I'll check his belt. Um, you'll find a bag, like, hanging from his belt, and there seems to be a glowing coming from it. Um, I say to Tustin, um, what is that on his belt that's glowing? Do I know what's on his belt that's glowing? Um, if I look at it? It just looks like some sort of magical bag. Well, uh, I, I... Get the, uh, I, I re- take it off his belt. Like it, you would say it's Magitech, but it doesn't. Uh, it looks not like uh, like it looks ancient to you. Mm. I never seen anything quite like it before. Most Magitech is current, right? People only discovered that this is a uh, something you could really do. Uh, but this bag seems much older. So either someone has enchanted an old bag, or it's from a long time ago. I wonder if this is from the dig. I don't know. It's not my problem anymore. As I say this, I pull out my six shooter and I fire a bullet into my own foot and a bullet into the whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. the dying magistrate. Oh. So, and we both begin to heal from them. Because I'm like, hey. Um, uh, doesn't um, Lauren make you do damage first and then heal? Um, that's true. Well, yes, and that's why I think you should let me do my thing first before you. All right. Should. Well, you can you can see me doing it, and you can like put a hand on my gun. I, yes, you know so, about this, Corvus. Are you zip it. We're gonna have a little talk about something I called non-lethal violence. Yes. And when I'm done, 
you'll know the difference. He wasn't strong enough not to die. Uh. Okay. I. So he gets six points. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, you also get a heal for three points. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, I didn't see everything that happened. I was a little tied up. Did it? How did it, how did he end up in this state? It looks like half his guts are spilled. Captain out. Murder Pants over here. Turns out she's pretty good with a knife. You did this? Whoa. She tree doesn't know what a muffin folk. is, but she knows what a jugular is. The, the tree folk are harmless. I, t- I do you liar. She she went and tried to gut me like a unicorn. I, I, I'm sure it. I'm sure that they would not have done that. What is this magic bag I found on your bed? I don't know anything about that. Oh, you better tell me the truth. I've, I've, oh, may have found you better it. tell me the truth. It I've got given, lots of magical creatures. It was I'll given call. to me as a tax. The town had to put a tax on uh, that crazy woman out there to the west, and when she wouldn't pay, we just collected the tax. That's all. <sighs> so, in other words, you saw an opportunity to steal from somebody. Well, that's what a tax is. I know how it works. You city folks steal your taxes from us. I steal my taxes from other people. Oh, great. So I ain't a thief. It's a I'm libertarian. A libertarian. <laughs> <laughs> well, lucky for you, you'll get to see where your tax dollars go. Can we just... If we leave him here, Zerids oh, no. will take him. Oh no, him. he's going to Mina. Oh. What is this? Do I do I still sense that Jimmy is there? Um, only in a vague sense. Like ever since now that you're attuned to him a bit, you get the sense of like just magic. Generally in this world, magical things um, have sort of a an aura a bit. They disturb yeah. the fields. Uh, you guys work with it enough. You're a little bit attuned to it. Everything still feels a little bit um, out of whack to you. But do I think he's there still? Um, you don't think he's necessarily <laughs> listening immediately. Um, Are you there, but, Jimmy? It's me, Tustin. But exactly. there's something similar about the bag. Like something about the bag has a similar feel to uh, wait a, to Jimmy. Some. <laughs> I just heard Jimmy's name parroted back to me. <laughs> That's Oh, the bag Jimmy. is unicorns related magic. Yes, no, I'm Claudia's just amused name. by hearing the name. <laughs> uh, his name is not Jimmy, but I know his name is Jimmy. Jimmy. As far as Tustin's concerned. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I think I ought to ride out and see this Katrina. I figure I should take her this magic bag. It probably belongs to her. It sounds like old Clyde here stole it. Something about something about that bag. It's, it's familiar to it's, Jim. It's sort of uh, it's about um, eh, about the size of uh, like uh, <laughs> a canteen maybe. Um, it's it's knotted up. Um, it would hold like you know maybe um, an apple. Here's a so. crazy question. What do we see if we open the bag? Uh, it's inside the bag. Do you open yeah. the bag? I open the bag. I let uh, the peek. Um, all right. Uh, you take it. You open it up. You suddenly feel it, like shaking. Um, and suddenly out of the bag, uh, uh, you are thrown to the ground. And uh, you see what looks like about 20 unicorns fly from the bag. <laughs> And go tearing out into the woods. We've just been last unicorned. Uh, after a minute. Do we die by trampling? After a minute, uh, you sit no! there for a minute, and like a little baby unicorn pops out of the bag and chases after the oh, others. Well, they're really bad at running. He sort of stumbles in the woods a little bit, and then eventually lifts up into the air and Does disappears. Does it have a full horn, or is it just kind of like a little it's rounded just a little stump? Nut. Well, maybe they oh lose goodness. it as it gets older. It's maybe so we've been. Oh, there. shite! Is that the same feel you felt? Now you feel it like times 20 of like things being out of sorts. Jimmy, did you know about this? Jimmy? 
Can I pull I it? I can't believe you just did that, you idiots. Why? I you... thought you knew magic. I only let one out. <laughs> Wait, just to be clear, the horses are... I, we just released a, I just released a bag just of, released. all right, listen, why don't you tie him up and stay here and wait for Jimmy? I'm going to go talk to Katrina. All right. She might know how to put these horses back in the bag. Uh, Jimmy doesn't seem to be, I don't know. Do you want to come he's with not... me? Well... He's clearly not taken to me right now. I so. figure you guys should just go. Just I'll I'll, I'll wait here. I tie him up and I put no. him on my horse. I would like to. Oh, him your well. horse now. Your horse seems pissed at you too. <laughs> <laughs> I say I'm sorry, Gertrude. Yeah. The moon is still yeah. high. This is all right. Fine, kid, come, but no killing anybody. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, it listen. Couldn't have. It couldn't have. It's like just a little twig. Part of keeping the queen's justice. Oh, please. What? You have the worst time believing like any petite woman. You think she isn't capable of violence. I'm not not aware that there's a particular gender attached to this creature to begin with, let alone. I'm just saying it's, you're right. You're right. It's my bad. But I'm saying that you you judge a book by its cover too much. To the south, you start to hear shouts and screams. <laughs> oh no! Uh, is is the south where Katrina is? Uh, no, the south is where the village is. Oh, Grandma! Oh, we have to go. All right, I have to go that way. We have to go that way. What do we do? Do we split up? Do we do we go after the screams? I think I think we're gonna be in a lot more trouble if we don't go after the screens. All right, screams we, than if we we go after the screams. Um, all right, I after, reload uh, my uh, shotgun. You're not that far from the village. As you come up on the village, you see people um, like people are in trees. Um, you see like unicorns tearing through fields of like wheat corn and uh, magic beets and. Uh, all the other <laughs> vegetables. Let's we'll start with magic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> magic corn. Magic corn. <laughs> magic beets. Magitators. Um, and sauce, sauce onions. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, you see, uh, just um, everyone's running. No one actually seems to be like hurt. Um, and occasionally a unicorn will just appear out of the mist and like charge like down the street and like disappear again. <laughs> Oh. oh, they're yeah. going to kick me out. They're going to kick me out of Skywatch. They're not going to kick you been, out. I, and I have the whole I'm cursed on Wednesdays. I don't work on Wednesdays. They already like were questioning that. And then they're now not... I released a bunch of unicorns into the terrible. Look, it could it could be worse. All right. There's at least we're not getting trampled by dagger peds like Sam. Did. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're going to die of a stampede. <laughs> it just starts like, hey, <laughs> hey, out. hey. Get it together. <laughs> I don't think I actually slap Ada, but no. I maybe I clap her on the shoulder. Get it, get it together. I don't want to die of a stampede. You're not, you're not gonna die of a stampede. Look, this is what we're, what we're here to do. do we just need to kill the horse. No, we need to get them. <sighs> we need to get them back. In the bag. Into the bag. I don't know if that's a good idea okay, either. Do you have this? It's kind of cruel. I know. I should know about this, though. I know magical lore. So, do I know anything? Do I have to roll? Tell me what you what you roll. I'll um, tell you what you. Oh. 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 Fourteen. And then, uh, so fifteen. Fifteen. Um, you think the bag is um, just a magical bag that can contain a large amount of things. Um, um, some things that if this were a different game system might be called a bag of holding. Mm. Uh, but uh, because that might violate copyrights, it is not. It is a, it's a bag of many it's a things. Magic bag. A magic um. bag. Um, you'll know th- th- this about these these creatures. Seem um, you would say they are um, probably not 
but harmful spirits. Um, sort of imagine the way you think of carnivorous animals versus um, 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 uh, omnivorous? Um, omnivorous or, her- or her- herbivorous. Herbiv- herbivorous. Like, uh, they seem like the magical equivalent of that. Like, they are mostly defensive. They kind of want to be left alone. But um, they're also dangerous just because who knows what powers they have. They're a horse. They're, they're all... a horse in a city. And they seem they seem very lost and out of sorts. Well, were the unicorn... Was the unicorn you met violent? No, that, Jimmy would never hurt a fly. Just like that twig thing over there. Look... They're just riled up because they were trapped in that tiny bag for so long. I feel bad about putting them back in the bag. They don't don't, have any space in there. We, they don't have any space in there. We just gotta calm the herd somehow and get them to. You do have no idea how to get a unicorn into a bag. Um, wait, wait, wait. What'd you say? Like you, you can tell from the bag you put small things in it, but you do have no idea how the unicorn is would be put into the bag. I, I really, um, Ada thinks it's time to go talk to Katrina because she really has no idea how to. Can we these lure unicorns. the unicorns to follow us so that? What do they like? They like gumdrops. Um, is there a candy store? There's got to be a candy store. We we packed gumdrops, knowing we were hunting that a unicorn. That many gumdrops. So. We need to make a trail of them that goes. Do I, does Ada uh, think that the, knowing what I know about uh, Magical Lord, do I think that uh, the unicorns would be tempted by gumdrops? Um, if they knew what a gumdrop was, uh, it seemed to take the unicorn <laughs> that Tustin met a while to figure it out, so that unicorn might be tempted. Mm-hmm. Um, these unicorns mostly seem to be like eating crops. Okay. Um, and there are a lot of crops in the village. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've still got the magistrate on my horse, but let's uh, let's try like riding away from town and like throwing the gumdrops and just see maybe what we have a lot of them with us. So let's just try throwing. Let, them. Let's even just start like, seeing if we can get their attention with yeah. them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's try it. Here, use this as well. Hello, unicorns. Um, we have some delicious gumdrops for you. Mm. I have pastries. Uh, they seem to, they seem to, they do seem to hear you. They don't seem to know you're necessarily talking to them, but they, uh, um, you catch their attention. Um, you hold out gumdrops? Yeah. I have pastries. Oh, okay. You hold out pastries? Yeah, they're like, uh, they're, I'd like to, like, like, right away and throw them and, like, they okay. have, like, a All right, Corvus, top. what's your defense? Uh, mine personally? Yes. <laughs> oh, 14. <laughs> 14, uh, a, a unicorn runs up and tries to stab you in the hand uh, that's holding the pastry, but you managed to move it out just in time. Uh, like, you, drop, spores. you drop the pastry and it spears the pastry on its horn um, and then runs off with it. <laughs> what good does that do it? It chased us. No, but like it, it wants the pastry. It's you stuck see on its it. Horn. Um, you see it's on the roof of a house. A few minutes later, floating the uh, <laughs> the pastry oh. off, sniffing at it, and then eating it. Ah, oh, clever beast. I mean, what else would you have a horn on the top if you cannot pick um, fruit with it? I'm I'm gonna ride for the settlement, uh, the the camp in Katrina. I yep. probably have no idea what else to do. You all go. Yeah, I'm on Dustin's horse because you've got a magistrate. Yeah, I've got uh, a large friggin' horse. Like I I've got a battle horse. That's in cool. one, in one last Nerd. desperate attempt, I call out, Jimmy, Jimmy, to see if I can get him to appear from within the crowd. Uh, Jimmy appears on the edge, uh, like like for the kind of to the west. Oh, I know. Um, for just a minute, and um, he's sort of like, hmm. He's not running around like the other unicorns. Um, he seems anxious. Jimmy, could you could you maybe convince your friends to to not trample the town? We're we're trying to find a place for you all to be. Um, make a communication. Where's our face? Twelve. Twelve. Um, he seems to. He seems to understand you want to help. Um, he just sort of gives what you would best describe as a, a horse shrug. Like, he seems helpless. Jimmy, we've, we've, 
We've been building up to this, I think, our entire lives. He's, and I've approached he kind of him. Sighs at Tustin as Tustin approaches <laughs> before you can get there. He aim he turns around and again points in the same direction he seemed to point last time, although you're further south, a little more west, and he leaps into the air again with his horn and oh, disappears. He was pointing. Oh, with horns. Is he pointing in the direction of the settlement? Yes. The West Witch. Uh, encampment, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to, I'm going to head that way. I said, w- he's pointing in the direction of the settlement. Let's, let's go talk to her. I mean, if, if he would let me ride him. Oh my God. Then I'm better nope. with the crowd. Anna, like, swings her horse around and is like, kick it into gear, Tustin. And like, hi-ya! What the hell you want to ride uh, a unicorn for anyway, you weirdo? Who says that? Like magistrate. Okay. It's tied on the back of my horse. <laughs> I didn't know if the, the horse. unicorn had developed a voice or something like that. I, I sigh and I swing up onto my horse. I like, I turn the horse around so I'm facing Jimmy and I point to him and I say, you know what's going to have to happen. And then I gallop and follow after Ada. You point to where Jimmy disappeared and say that. What is supposed yeah, to happen? Yeah, fine. <laughs> fine. Right. Um, you you make your way down the hills, um, because again, this town is up on a plain, um, the, uh, the, or up on a kind of plateau. Um, you make your way down the hills to the level of the river, and there, um, sort of out near um, what looks like a kind of bog area, um, you do see a few tents set up. Just, um, uh, and you see like a single horse I, um, and a small fire. I announce myself as I ride in. I say, hello, I'm Ada Blood. This is Tustin. Shoot, what's your last name? Clyde. Clyde. Uh, we're from Skywatch and we're looking to speak with Katrina. Uh, Zia, um, you hear a voice, uh, say, uh, Katrina? There is no Katrina here, just a Katrina. One more time. Kotrina? Ah, common mistake. My name is Kotrina. Kotrina Qatar. Kotrina. Ada Blood, nice to meet you. Listen, I've got something here. I think this might be yours. Oh. I unfortunately unleashed about 20 unicorns onto the 20 town. 20 unicorns? There. You unleashed 20? You opened the bag? I. The first rule of magical research is know what you're opening before you open it. It could have been any number of things. Well, yeah, it was Ada. on the magistrate's belt, and I thought it... I wasn't sure what it was. So that's where it went. So he now... came by talking about a tax, asking for money, as if I don't know. He has no claim over this land. I worked what I, I worked my agreement out with... Uh, with the, 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 the Mina Research Guild. I don't understand what he thought he'd do. Oh, he's been doing lots of things he shouldn't be doing. Well, I'll say, listen, I, I don't even know, I don't even know what period that bag comes from. Are you, are you saying that the bag already had the unicorns in it when you found it? I didn't even know it had unicorns. I fa- would you like to see where I found it? Please. Sure. This is our friend, Corvus. Well, Corvus. Sure. Oh, you, uh, you're... I'm from Yugoslav. From Yugoslav. Uh, yes. She says something in your language. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Uh, she said, it is nice to meet you. Watch your baked goods if you have any. Oh, I know their habits of taking things. Listen, you need to understand something. Um, my personal property, whatever, but the other things you find here, they're very dangerous. It would create quite the imbalance if someone were to say, take something or move it or open it and let loose unicorns. Okay. 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 Um, she leads you down. Uh, she seems to have dug out, um, in fact, you see several devices that look like Magitek devices to you. Um, she says these are registered, of course, uh, with the guild. I use them to dig carefully uh, to avoid uncovering anything. Um, and you see she's dug out these sort of uh, cubes of land and found a doorway. Um, it looks like an old doorway to you made of stone. Um, it's been opened. 
And inside, uh, you find uh, torches, uh, which he lights. Um, and it's a small square room with sort of engravings on all the walls. She says, I found a number of objects in this room. Um, I have had my aides take them away um, for investigation. I'd only kept a small crate of objects, um, which she opens up the crate. She says, which certainly enough have been taken. All of them? It would appear so. The bag is one of the only items that I thought might be magical. Because I'm not a mage myself, merely a researcher. Well, would you like to know what's magical? Uh, certainly, if you have the ability. I've heard Skywatch has methods. Um, so Ada rolls up her sleeves and uh, casts uh, arcane detection. Were all the objects taken, or is there are there objects what left crate, still? Or? Just about. I kept a couple on myself, uh, like inside my tent. They didn't get those, just the ones I left down in this room. Yeah. Most of the people here are too superstitious to come near. Yeah, so so Ada will cast this, and uh, this this spell is pretty strong, so she'll be able to kind of, okay. she'll uh, be able to point out to Katrina um, which items are magical. Um, yes, so you cast it, and it's just a general like, area of effect. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. 10 yards, 10 minutes. You see Tustin's gun glows. Um, you see, or, or do you have magical? Any my, magic uh, nothing is magical about my yeah. gun or, we- or my ammunition. I infuse it. So. You don't. You see Tustin himself glow a little bit, as well as Corvus, um, as yes. most Skywatch members do, given they generally have magical affinity. Um, uh, Katrina does not glow. She has a couple of items on her belt that do some of the equipment uh, glows, um, and the walls themselves in this room glow. Um, hmm. Looks like we're in a magical building, or at least something with wards on it. Do we all see it, or does just, uh... I think just you see it. Just I see it, but I describe what I see to the group. Yeah. Um, specifically, uh, you notice the engravings seem to be pictographs of some sort, and as you cast, um, uh, as, as you identify it, you start to see um, the lines of magic actually complete some of the pictures. Um, oh, oh, this is interesting. So uh, what I'm seeing with the magic is uh, now that I've cast this, it actually completes the pictures. Yeah. So you see in one, um, you see what looks like humans fighting, um, you would guess, some sort of spirit. Um, you see another of which looks like two humans uh, sneaking into um, a, a sort of forest clearing, um, holding a bag. You see a third where one of the humans um, is holding some sort of rod into the air, um, and you see spirits being pulled into the bag. And the final panel is humans riding on top of of what looks like um, the spirits that were pulled into the forest. Um, riding on top of them into battle with other spirits. I'm seeing lots of things here. It almost looks like, if I was to understand this correctly, that you can put things into, perhaps this bag is the bag they mean, but it looks like they're using a rod to put things into a bag, like spirits and whatnot. Um, a rod? Yes. I, I have a rod. Uh, she takes off her belt uh, a small like rod. It's just a very simple like ebony wooden um, staff uh, with a small white uh, sphere on top. I think this might actually be a companion piece to the bag. This might be what controls the bag. That would make sense. These the people who lived here seem very advanced. Uh, if I had to guess, this would date maybe as far back as the as the Great War of the Spirits. Although records are unclear if there was more than one or what exact period that would be. Well, I mean, if it works, we could uh, to trap spirits in the bag, then we could use it to 
at least get the spirits away, the unicorns away from the town into somewhere, relocate them somewhere safe. What does uh, Ada make of the locations in the drawing? Does does she get the impression that this has to take place in the forest? Um, no, it looks to you. Uh, make an intelligence check. Or another lore if you want to add two. You can add two to your own. Uh, oh, 13. Um, 13? This is what you would guess. Um, it looks to you like uh, humans used it to trap spirits in the bag and tame them. Or force them, you're not sure, uh, to fight with them. Um, you're not certain that um, the spirits it looks like are being trapped in the pictograms are not unicorns. You're guessing maybe um, it's more general than that. Um, that the forest is simply maybe where they found these particular spirits in the drawings. Tustin. Yeah. I think this was a tool used by spirit hunters. Like whatever years ago the equivalent of Skywatch was. They use this for containment and controlling spirits. It's a, it's a powerful and dangerous uh, piece of history right there. If you think about all the encounters we have with spirits, can you imagine if we just put That's, them in a bag? It would change the way Skywatch did its business. It could potentially also make things a lot less uh, violent than they currently are. <sighs> Here's what I'm thinking right now, is we go back to the village and we try to use this device to re uh, get all of them unicorns back into that bag. Then I can take them on a pilgrimage north, far away from here. Why not? And we can live out our lives together. I do like the idea of relocating them. I'm not sure about relocating you. Well, I mean. Just because you're lonely doesn't mean you have to go off and not live with civilization anymore. It'd just be so much easier that way. You're just in one of those uh, phases of your life. It'll be over. I close my eyes and I can't help but see Sam's body with those little dagger feet, you know, thousands of them on those insects. Well, not insects, but arthropods just <laughs> you you come from the you said you come from the forest that the northern forests are where more of your people are at right yeah. that's that's We're like there's more. that's like an area where unicorns could no it's not we don't the the area outside the forest in the winter becomes very cold covered in snow and ice in the summer it's hot uh, yes, it is bountiful and we survive, but it would be hard for wildlife outside the forest would live, and our forests are so tight, they can't run through it. We don't have horses. Well, tell you what. First rule of order is to get these horses back in the bag. Then we can decide where to release them. I will assist you. So... How do you feel about coming with us and taking a look at these uh, these magical creatures? I'd be very interested in seeing them. I am not a fighter, so I hope you don't expect me to. I would yeah. just love somebody with us that knows a little something about ancient things. We're, we're not expecting there to be any violence or anything like that on this. This is, this should just be Simple cleanup. All right. Well, I'd be happy to go with you in that case. Uh, let me gather a few of my things and we'll go off. I suppose the villagers will leave my things alone for yes. some amount of time, especially with this one tied up. Jimmy, if you're there, we're going to make this work. Captain Blunt. It's my promise to you. Who's Jimmy? Oh. His favorite unicorn. Ugh. He's a he's a special guy. You he keep, knows it. You keep mentioning, like you keep bringing this magistrate along. He's slowing us down. Why are you keeping him alive? Let him return to the earth. Let him grow something You're, worthwhile. 
So there's no use in where, keeping things that are not useful. Where we're from, we don't feel so connected with the earth that we long to return to it. For us, there may no, not be anything after we die. So the end of things may just be the end of things, which is why we're not exactly excited to get to the end of it. You're, you're not like the other tree folk I've met. No, we're not the same. Yeah, you're dirtier and crazier. I will I, gag you. I will stab you. I will let her stab you. All right, fine. I'll keep my mouth shut, but believe me, you let her go with you, it'll bring you to a bad end. Blah, blah, blah. Tell me more about what you think, Mr. Man tied to my horse. If I said that to my elders, they would cut out my tongue. It's an option. See, she comes from ruinous people. I'm not. Well, clearly I, uh, we're not going to solve any great interspecies yeah, we, we, conflict we today. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> All right, uh, you're returning to the town? Yep. Yes. Uh, you return to that. I guess Katrina brings her own horse. I was like, <laughs> how are you guys all riding? Um, uh, you arrive. Uh, at this point, the um, uh, unicorns seem to be inside the houses. Uh, most of the people are outside. Uh, they're starting to gather with, like, torches and pitchforks, oh. although they seem unclear on what they're going to do with those. Um, if you could guess anything, uh, the unicorns look like they're eating things inside the houses. Um, well, to, I don't know if I, they have to be outside of the houses for this to work. Well, we don't want them, like, being dragged through walls or anything, that's for sure. I'm not sure we how got, this will go. Well, I have the rod and the bag, and I'm, like, ref I'm thinking, like, back to what I saw depicted uh, in, in the, the magic uh, yeah. house. This so is I, what I dismount you, my this horse. what you remember. Yeah. It's in the woods. There are spirits all around. <clears throat> There's one spirit that seems bigger than the others, and the spirits are flowing from the big spirit to the bag. The human is just holding the rod into the air. It's not even like a tap. So Do I have to hold? Tap? Was the person holding the bag? A uh, second person was holding the bag. Okay. How about you hold the bag? I don't know if I want to hold the bag. And I will hold the rod. All right. But you said something about there being a big spirit in it. Um, I'm sure it's not really necessary for this. I'm sure it's just a Yeah, usually the they, game. when they put stuff like that in their drawings, it, it ain't for no reason. There's not no, really. Ain't I no. Mean, I don't know. Ain't no. It's probably Consequence fine. To, to anything anyone did back well, then. Well, let's just try it. And yeah. See. Sure. All right, who holds the bag? <laughs> I I sort of anxiously hold the bag. You make sure our horses don't trample anybody. These ones? Yes. That I've already tied. Oh, yes. Oh, I hold. Okay. I make sure. Just just keep an eye on them and theirs and the magistrates. I'm going to sing to them, and as I do, like a little quiet whispers, and as I do sports, they're just sleeping out and just sneaking and just... Great. A dull haze over these um, I uh, hold the rod high and I say, um, Unicorns, come to me. Go in this bag if you want to be free. Um, you feel the ground begin to shake in like holding the rod up, it begins to shake. <laughs> Um, Tustin, the bag uh, at your um, begins to grow larger, and light begins to pour out. Um, you notice it almost like it's pointing out like a spotlight. Uh, you're having a little bit of trouble controlling it. Um, I think it's working. Do you wish to point that spotlight anywhere in particular? Uh, am, I, am I like able to move freely with it, or? Yeah, you can kind of like manage to like drag it into place. I it's. Think Maybe you'll right. just opening up like a giant. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh. I'm gonna go up to one of the houses. I'm gonna knock on the door. Yeah. I'm gonna wait and see if anyone answers. Yeah. 
Does anyone answer? Uh, no, no one has answered. Do you see? I'm like, going to politely open the door. I'm uh, going to look to see if there's if you a unicorn. Open the inside. door. The light finally bursts forth, and it just blows the entire house into like pieces, <laughs> like in a giant cloud of magic. Um, and a voice says in a language that sounds like all languages you know and none. Uh, the shepherd has been chosen. Um, and the light within the house coalesces and a what you see a strange creature you've never seen imagine a it's it's white and glowing it's like a, a sphere covered in fur and it has a smaller sphere in back and two long ears on top uh, and tiny pink eyes and uh, a mouth full of teeth oh it's horrible um, with giant big fuzzy feet uh, with claws on the end. I feel like this is a reference I should be getting in a No, 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 it's just angry feet. And it Two leaps them. into the air uh, with a mighty bound, uh, like leaping much higher than you imagine a creature. Like it leaps probably 60 feet into the air um, and lands again and sniffs around with its long ears kind of bouncing around on its back and then leaps after a unicorn. Um, the unicorn uh, uh, seems frightened and runs toward you, Tustin. Oh, it's getting in the bag. Uh, oh, the bag, Tustin. I, I hold the bag open and see my life flash before my eyes. Make a dexterity check. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get stampeded. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, you man, you just managed to get the bag around it. Um, you're like having done so. You feel like you kind of have the hang of this. Um, that's uh, good job. One down. Nineteen to go. Okay. Uh, the this uh, this this strange creature begins bouncing into the air again and landing on other like houses and in the fields. Uh, um, and uh, every time it does so, it seems to chase other unicorns out. It's hurting. All of them begin to run toward the bag. Okay. Hold on, Justin. I pray to whatever gods I believe in. You're not going to get stampeded. I'm here for you. I, I, I really hope not. I've had enough stampeding to last a lifetime. Like sweating because this is so stressful. Because <laughs> she's like, oh my God, we're going to get stampeded and we're going to die. But she keeps saying to Justin, you're okay. Pre I'm not going to let you get trampled. Pretty soon there are unicorns coming from all directions. Uh, you just oh, manage. Uh, make a, make three dexterity checks. Uh, yeah. 10, 19. Okay. Actually, are any of these acrobatics? Because I guess. Sure, you can use acrobatics. Uh, oh. Ooh, shit. Six, seven, uh, 13 on that one. And the one more? Ah, uh, also 13. All right, at first you flip around, <laughs> and like uh, you get pretty kind of clever about it. Um, you feel like you're using a lasso a little bit. Um, and then you get a little bit cocky. Yeah. Uh, and one of the unicorns gets caught on the edge of the bag and drags you, uh, knocks you off your feet not, and drags you sort of toward the end of town before the you plan, get around Not the plan, not the plan. At this point, you look up and you see the last of the unicorns running toward you, which is the little baby. <gasps> oh. uh, you've not yet seen Jimmy. And right behind it is coming the gigantic uh, fluffy creature. That bounds like leap after leap, um, leaving giant imprints in the ground. Uh, I want to try to flip a gumdrop so that it will land in the path of the baby unicorn, uh, and it can it can grab it out of the air as it runs towards the uh, runs it, towards. It does. The it's thing. a baby, so it's like running kind of awkwardly. Like its butt keeps trying to get ahead of its body, but it just manages awkwardly to like grab the gumdrop out. Um, <laughs> It leaps into the into the bag, um, and the bunny is now headed straight for oh, it's you. A bunny. Oh, it's a bunny. Yeah, uh, I, we didn't we didn't get in. I look at the bunny. How how big is this bunny? Uh, it's more of a rabbit. Um, it is about uh, mm, fifteen yards tall, Whoa. about thirty yards long. Does Ada think that this bunny is supposed to go in the bag? 
Um, it looks too big. Like the bag grew to the size of the unicorns. It seems too uh, um, small for the. At the same time, rabbit. it came out of the bag. The rabbit's actually not looking at the bag. It's looking at Tustin. Tustin, shut the bag! And I pull like the rod down out of the air and say, um, uh, "Bunny, bunny, go away." <laughs> Uh, we need not your kind to stay. Um, as your words ring out through the air, it has very little effect. Uh, but as as you pull the rod down, the bun, uh, the rabbit uh, turns. Um, suddenly, seems very angry, and it leaps straight for you, Ada. Everyone needs to roll initiative. Oh Whoa. yeah, I want to do a murder stab. Uh, you want to kill a bunny? I want to kill a rabbit. Ah. I've done it before. Not in real life. 13. 13? 17. 12. 17. Uh, not really great. The dice are not, uh, really well they're not our that. friends. Um, the first thing the, uh, the rabbit does is, let me get to the right page here, excellent. Um, it leaps into the air uh, and tries to land right on top of you, Ada. Um, make a defense roll. Okay. So, well, my defense is 11, so I just roll three. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Yes, I, sorry, I, I'm playing the wrong game in my head. Yep. <laughs> Um, it, uh, lands right on top of you, um, ah! hits you, uh, ah. for, uh, 12 damage, uh, and knocks you prone. Uh-oh. Uh, it lets out a hiss, and then turns its gaze toward you, Tustin. Um, Corvus, it's your turn. Things were going so well. Uh, cool. Corvus will run towards the rabbit and make a a um a mm, perception check. Okay. All three. Oh, all three of you make a perception. Twelve for me. Eighteen. Eighteen. You, no you notice it has what looks like jewelry in its ears. Um, eighteen. Yeah. Um. It looks to you as kind of someone who's involved in Skywatch, almost like like military insignias upon this thing. It seems to be moving with intelligence as well. Um, and it seems very angry. Um, Tustin. It's, oh no, Corvus, sorry. It's a military bunny. A what? A military bunny. Oh, does that change? No. I, no, I'm just... I'm gonna, uh, Corvus will run at it, leap, leap, and I'm gonna use an intelligence che check to just natural lore to understand how do you calm down small rabbits? I'm really good at killing them. Not so good at calming uh, them down. I have used the word rabbit to define this creature, but, uh, it's not. Uh, rabbits are there. No one knows what a rabbit is. Oh, so small woodland. It's not very woodland. natural, it seems, uh, at all. It's definitely a spirit. Mm, I did not roll hot at all. Uh, eight. Eight. And that For is, like, what is it? it is a natural lore. What animal? You all you think is um, this is not a natural animal. Uh, it seems to move with intelligence and purpose. Um, although you're not sure exactly what its purpose is. Can I? I'm gonna open it. Oh. Spirit of an age before ours, please stop. You've lent us aid. We do not need to fight you. Um, it grins and like shakes its shoulders at you, and you notice it has a uh, like a necklace around its neck now, with uh, human skulls on it. Ah. Uh. Oh. Well then. Um. And uh, Corvus, are you? Is it? Okay. It's out of my turns. Um, but I did get into the battlefield with everyone else. Yes. Uh, I'm going to unholster my gun. I've put the bag down. Um, 
closed the back. <laughs> Uh, to be Friends. clear, uh, and I one of my uh, one of the shells in my shotgun starts to burn with fire, uh, and I call out to it and I say, "Stand down, soldier! The war is over!" And I fire a, a shot at it. <gasps> oh. Um. Uh, yep. Roll your attack. Uh, six, eight, eleven. Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. You hit it. Uh, and it's going to do yeah. as the the fire sears at it. Uh, it's going to do uh, eighteen damage. Eighteen. Uh, the fire hits it. Um, it definitely burns at it. It hisses. Um, but uh, it seems pretty sturdy. Um, uh, at this point, uh, Ada. Um, I target the creature. Um, I, I'm just gonna like try to hack it down with my uh, broadsword. Yes. Or my great sword, I should call it. Oh. Eight, and you are ten. prone, so you'll need to use your move to stand up unless yeah, you want to. Yeah, I will do time. that. Um, so I get uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Um, you just managed to hit it. Great. Um, and then I have stunt points, so. I'm actually going to use uh, Mighty Blow so I can add another die to my um, yes. damage. Yay! Four, five. So that's actually, I didn't roll very well at all, so I got eight damage. Wait, what? Come on. Eight damage? Uh, you oh, just. Oh, sorry, no, 11. 11, okay. I, I missed You do one. manage, it has pretty thick hide, but you managed to uh, cut through it um, and stab it in the flank. Um, it hisses again. Seems very upset about that. Um, it uh, then uh, um, leaps uh, all the way across uh, several yards to Tustin uh, and attempts to land upon him. My defense is 14. Um, it does, in fact, land upon you, dealing uh, 11 damage to you. Ah. Um, and, uh, knocking you prone. Oh. Um, Katrina uh, says, uh, I can't believe it, but that looks like one of the spirits of history. Maybe a foot soldier in the spirit war of all things. But we haven't seen spirits like that in ages from what I understand. Oh, I hate to kill it if it's, you know... Ancient and whatnot. Well, they killed Kirk! enough humans. What? They killed a lot of humans. Oh. They depopulated half a continent. Oh. Kill it. Um, it is uh, Corvus. It's your turn. Uh, Corvus realizes it's tough looking. So Corvus is going to run at it uh, and try to, like, uh, grab it and in its face area just let, breathe out a puff of poison gas. I yell, Corvus! I take it back! Kill it! Kill it! Kill it! Uh, and my roll for that is 8, 10, 15! 15, you hit? How much damage? It knows that I'm in, there. And so any not... effect from the oh. spores. Oh, wait, no! I use my magic and I roll as many dice. I use three magic. I'm going to do uh, 10 damage. 10 damage? Mm hmm. Um, all right. Um, and is there any effect of the poison other than... It's just uh, death or sleepy, and I want to make it poisonous. So, like, slowly... I like to believe it that the spores are growing from the inside out, and so, like, they're positing in the lungs, and then that will eventually mold and decay. Yes, but oh, in <laughs> terms of this combat, oh, there are no... they're poison. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, now uh, it is uh, Tustin's turn. All right. I'm prone. I'm underneath the uh, the evil rabbit. Yeah, it knocked you to the ground. You could. St it's you're kind of beside it at this point. It's skidded over you. All right. Well, I'm going to get up with my minor action. I'm going to take my shotgun uh, <laughs> and fire another flame bullet uh, right into its hide, and because of my firearm style, I do an extra damage when I'm within six yards of an enemy. You totally so. are. Oh, let's see how we do here. Ooh, Ooh. Stunted with just one. Still uh, 12 
Uh, 1819 is the attack roll. Uh, you can. Oh, sweet. Uh, so I. You definitely hit. I, I unload my remaining round, uh, and without even stopping. Uh, stopping to consider it, I knock open the the butt of my gun uh, and immediately just toss two uh, two more rounds from my bandolier into it, and I shut it closed. Uh, so I did a rapid reload there, and uh, the damage is going to be uh, nineteen damage. So that's total for the whole thing, or that's a second for the that's, whole damage. That's okay. the damage for the attack I did. Um, you just unload into it uh, with your rapid firing. Um, it seems uh, surprised by the extent of your hit. Um, it also seems surprised at your weapon. Like it did not expect. Times have changed. To do that. Um, all right. It is uh, Ada's turn. Uh, Ada runs at it and like takes a uh, takes her sword low and basically sweeps up as she passes it and tries to um, basically hamstring it oh yeah uh, all right make your attack oh, oh I rolled too many dice let's do that again make your uh, attack fairly <laughs> uh, so 13 um 13 um it just manages to hit great um it's quick but large. Oh man, yes. that sound effect was grossing me out. Uh, and 11 Mark damage. is on point. I know. 11 damage. We are uh, killing a giant. Um, yeah. All right, uh, again, this thick hide is enough to uh, protect it somewhat, um, but it's still, um, it's, it's bleeding pretty badly around its large legs at this point. It's uh, It spins angrily. Um, I think it Tustin. Um, and opens up its mouth. I'm not making friends with this thing. And you see a fireball come from <gasps> inside its throat. It learned! Uh, uh, straight at you. Uh, 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 at the very last minute, you see a flash. Uh, and uh, Jimmy! Uh, you see a Jimmy! unicorn appear in front of you. The fire Jimmy! hits no! the unicorn. And the unicorn like lights up. On fire, uh, the fire turns into like rainbow sparks, and the whole thing oh. like poof, <gasps> in a cloud of multicolored sparks that like slowly burn away. Is he okay? You would guess not okay. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, you see, um, you see, um, you see something fall from like his cloud at uh, at his feet. At the at where his feet were, Jimmy. <laughs> In fact, you see four like golden horseshoes like sitting on the ground where uh, where he was, and something Jimmy. else. Oh, um, it is Ada. Oh no, sorry, it is um, Corvus's turn. Did you, oh, uh, do I see the thing at the feet? Am I close enough that I can? You know what? First things first. I'm the realist. I'm just gonna. Uh, Corvus is gonna go around and just like try to stab right where you had just set up, trying to get in through that thick hide, because little dagger, big four. So I got a lot of it, but I did stun. So before you tell me, I got. Oh, I can stay aware. Uh, I would like to stay aware. She's All right, you are very her. aware as the rabbit leaps up and your stab goes Ooh. under it and it lands just as you retract. Well, I get a roll and then if I succeed, we'll make either make you aware of a battle situation that so far I escaped my notice or give me a bonus on the next test. Um, instead of being aware of that, you were distracted by thoughts of all this terrible stuff has happened in this village, and you don't know what's happened to your fellow oh. villagers. It suddenly occurs to you, what if they're in danger? That's fair. And you were distracted. Dude. Uh, Tustin. Everything you have I'm is made of I'm overwhelmed trees. and shocked with grief. I'm going to step forward using my minor action to where... That's where Jimmy was. What do I see there? It looks like some kind of badge of some sort. 
like uh, like a little like triangular medallion with like a tiny chain. I pick it up. Does it does it do anything or seem magical? No, it just or? has some writing on it that you don't like. You can't read. I put the badge on. <laughs> In the middle. And I of say. I will avenge you, Jimmy. Not on this you. turn. <laughs> well, I don't know what counts as a minor or major action in this context. Um, I will let you do that as a minor action. Okay. For narrative say, purposes. You died as you lived, full of sparkles. And I unleash another fire uh, shot at the uh, at the spirit. Uh, 9, 10, 16. 16, you hit. All right. The fire does extra damage. Uh, 6, 8, 13, 20. 20? Um, uh, the fire lights it up. Uh, it's, um, its fur like looks quite singed. Um, and you see like underneath the fur, it has all sorts of tattoos on its pale, wrinkly skin. Of like of rabbits like biting the heads off of humans so and like nice. eviscerating them. My my name is Tustin Clyde, and I am honorary prince of the unicorns, and I will avenge my friend Ada. Um, while he's saying this, I'm just gonna be like. And we swing, and we, like, I'm gonna just overhead hack, and I'm going after that same uh, leg I've been working on. Yes. So, oh man. Oh, it's so bad. Uh, nine. Uh, nine. I'm afraid uh, the leg twitches as it burns, and you just miss it, and your sword slams into the dirt. Um, it uh, squeals out now in pain and burning, and um, tries. Uh, um, it breathes a cloud of poison <gasps> at you, Ada. My spores. It's turned the spores back on us. Yes, it looks like spores. Um, How could that it, be? What's your defense? Eleven. Eleven. You managed to just duck out of the way as the Ooh. spores like swirl past you. Um, maybe from now on, melee. <laughs> Um, and it is, um, Corvus's turn. Uh, well, that's sad. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess the spores have chosen another and I'm gonna be angry and, uh, just stab right, just right You feel like those, they're like magic spores. Yeah. Like it, a, almost a parody of everything you are. Um, Seems to mock turner. you. Uh, I got... 22 to hit. You Ooh. hit, for uh, sure. I got six combat stunts. I'm wow. going to make yes. a lethal blow. Yes. yes. Uh, so then... Yes. How, are you, how are you attacking? Uh, stabbing. You're stabbing? Stabbing yep. right in the in the murder parts. You get two um, more. No, my, this is because I'm not stealthing. I only get one, so no, one. you get a lethal blow. I know, but one plus 2d6. That for makes damage. For damage. Um, so I do... 10. Oh. 10 damage? Um, let's see. Uh, as you stab into it, um, you feel your stab go into it, and then it, you, it gives way, and you see it begin to pull apart. Um, and uh, it shrieks and sort of twists in on itself, um, and then gets pulled into a small ball, and you feel its light get pulled back into the or the rod. I don't know if you're still holding it or if you dropped it. Uh, uh, I'm still holding it uh, down, though. Yeah. Uh, the last thing you see is like a, uh, a like its skull kind of being like pulled into the rod, and the rod like um, begins to hum and like vibrate increasingly, like and like making a high pitched whine. Okay. Is it getting worse or is it? Diminished? It's getting worse. Um. I put the rod down. Like just next to you? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I uh, chuck it. Yeah, you chuck it in, in it, the... Like, into a place where I could retrieve it. Like, I'm not gonna, like... I'm gonna, like, try to chuck it into it non... Like, away from structures. 
Okay. Um, you chuck it into uh, toward a tree, and like right before it hits the tree, it explodes um, and just like takes out a giant. Like it just cuts the tree off, like into a sphere. Oh. Uh, everything within that sphere is just like gone. Um, yeah, if I died in the past, yeah, I, <laughs> you would have a cool and scar. I guess so. Then... Um, I'm was, like, whew! Uh, townspeople, like, look out from, like, behind their burnt houses. Townspeople, good news! <laughs> we have uh, defeated the creature, and we have contained the unicorns. We uh, are taking this magistrate who attacked us and was up to no good and was stealing. Don't trust them. They're in line with the unicorn. <laughs> I, uh, you start to hit him, but the muffin woman is already there, and she's already, like, smacked him. She's I, like, oh, shut up. The muffin went up. Yes, the Muffin Widow. I've just collapsed onto my knees between the four horseshoes. And there's like wisps of smoke coming from the the barrel of my gun. Uh, Katrina and, comes up. She's like, may I see that? He, yeah. You may. She looks at it. She's like, this is odd. I don't know if my translation is correct or not, but it literally translates to human watch. <laughs> you, don't, you don't mean... Look, there were all sorts of spirits. I Some hated humans, some perhaps worried about us and kept watch. If I had to guess, this spirit has for centuries kept his job and done his duty. We have we have a herd of unicorns still in the bag. We need to I, we need to find somewhere. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Ada goes in search of Peter. Good old Peter. Um, you find Peter with Gwen. They're like holding each other. And like, she seem like they both seem like upset, but also not that upset. Um, I say to the two of them, I say to Gwen, I was like, did the unicorn make you feel guilty? Me? Guilty? No, not at all. Okay. Why do you ask? No reason. <laughs> um, listen, we would like to release these unicorns into a place where they won't hurt anybody. Yeah. Make a perception check. Um, boy. <laughs> Your dice. My you dice need, are broken. You need different dice. You need different yeah. dice. Yeah. <laughs> what is your... Um, six. Man, both Peter and Gwen are totally wasted now. Like, they are just, like, <laughs> drunk. <laughs> they clearly have been drinking. What do you think? I'm 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 what? busy crying over the spot a unic my um, unicorn friend I look that. I I perceive harder. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to ask somebody else what's going no, on? No, I want to figure out like I don't think you can re perceive this. Like you're like, yep, they're drunk. They're super drunk. That's the only reason they would be behaving the way they are. Like, holding on to each other the way they are and, like, giggling. But clearly alcohol. <sighs> okay. Uh, but I do ask them, I was like, is there a place that isn't inhabited that we might let them loose? Um, those, the unicorns? Yeah. I, do you don't, you don't have any way to get them back in the bag, do you? They're already back in the bag. I'm saying if you let them out, they're out forever, right? Yeah. Maybe find a better place than this. Uh -huh. Here's like 
I don't, I, like, I, I don't want to spend the rest I, of my life here. Fine. Well, let's Sky go to deal with it well, when we get back in town. I, I have I have an idea, too. I get up and I go to Katrina, is it? or Katrina. Katrina Katar. Katrina Katar. And I say, look, uh, you're... You're obviously traveling a lot, and you seem to know a lot about the sort of the environments that. <laughs> I'm sorry that these different these different animals live in. Do you think you might be able to find a a safe area? I mean, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but at some point. Of course, my research takes that, me all sorts of places. Who knows where I'll end up next? All right, I hand her back the bag. I'm entrusting you with them, the same way. Jimmy would have. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate what you do. I... I I can't be the one to take them. I've I've come to realize my place is with the Skywatch. Because there are things, dangerous things like that fluffy bunny spirit from darker times and... (sighs) As much as I want to leave it all behind, I can't abdicate my responsibility. Good. I feel like a little, like, little faint sense of approval from the badge right here. (laughs) Oh, Jimmy, you're tugging at my heartstrings. Um, Ada goes in search of the Muffin Widow. (laughs) Uh, You find her, she's making muffins. Listen. I could I can't sleep after all that. I might as well make muffins. I feel like you have some common sense and some reason that a lot of your town folk are, shall we say, missing. So, by Let's the power invested in me by Skywatch, I name you acting magistrate until a fair uh and impartial uh appointing of the next magistrate. Oh, thank the spirits. It's about time. Would you tell the village people you did it? They have some insane superstition about women being in charge. Yes. And we're going to do something about that. You know, Ada, one of these one of these days, someone's going to find out that you can't, that you're just making all these laws up wherever you go. You shut it. I, I say I say this in confidence, not to... Listen, <laughs> I told him I was writing him a ticket. I told him he'd have to report yeah. to Mina. I was going to get him to have to take a sensitivity training. <laughs> you're, you're such a scamp, Ada. Hey, uh, Corvus, was it? Y- yes. Corvus yeah. looks like, like they're really ready to go. They're looking back. Like, they actually just came back to say goodbye because everything's all packed up. You're kind of... You're a dangerous one. I don't know if you knew that, but you got. They told me that a lot. You got, yeah. you got a lot. You got a lot of bravery. I'll you say. Got a lot of and you got, you know, you maybe you need to find yourself some way to to channel that. Just something to think about. Corvus, are you ready to go home? Yeah. Yeah. And like, so they didn't die. Th- that, that whisper no, they, echo can they somehow come go. like wheeling in on their old wagon. They seem to actually have no idea that any of this happened. Oh, because they, they put Oh, you made some friends, them. Corvus. Yes. yes That's girl. nice. That's very nice. I be, always hoped you'd make friends. Be very careful when you interact with people, they have different ways from you. Less, you have to realize that your murdery. beliefs are just one set of beliefs, and not everybody shares them. So when you meet new people, keep an open mind. And Don't maybe, push. maybe a closed dagger. Maybe. maybe. I, maybe. I don't know. The, I, I lost my it's good to meet metaphor you. there. It's good to be able to be myself outside the forest. Come, Corvus. It's not your rum springer yet, and I've got to get you back, or your mom will have my hide. Take care. Maybe we'll meet again one day. Yeah, I'd like that, Captain. You shouldn't say stuff like that. You know it'll never happen. Mm. I make an uh, announcement to the townspeople before I go. (laughs) We're taking this asshat back with us to Mina. (laughs) Don't believe them! Don't believe them! They're all witches! This place will burn its curse now! You heard me! 
I know some of you are suspicious, and I know a majority of you are really relieved I'm taking this man off your hands. The muffin <laughs> lady. She's a witch. <laughs> you will be quiet. She made muffins, and look what happens. The Muffin Widow will be your interim magistrate until which she time? She killed her own husband and bakes him into muffins. I put a muffin in his mouth. <laughs> now we'll be Skywatch will be sending somebody to check on you in a few weeks. We expect that next time we roll into town, you won't have somebody attached to a stake and ready to be burnt unless they've had a fair trial and actually committed a heinous crime, which you have had a fair trial for. All right. A little kid comes up to you, Corvus. It's like, hey, can I stab people like you stabbed that bunny? Uh, Corvus. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go to take out the dagger. It has not been cleaned. It's like made of like wood. It's like a snake. I'd be like, if you work hard enough <laughs> and you practice, you can also just stab everything. Make sure it's always in the weakest spots. Uh -huh. Otherwise, your dagger will break in half. In the weakest spot. In I'll weakest remember. Kneecaps. Always kneecaps. I clap my hand on Ada's shoulder and say, we should get out of here. We should go. Uh, the child hands you like a, a, a ring. She's like, here, to remember me by. Is it made of, uh, oh yeah. It looks fairly nice. This is very nice. I stole it for you. <gasps> oh goodness. Oh God. They'll remember whenever you steal. You have to eventually. It's only if they don't need it, right? You head out, leaving the village behind. Never to return. Perhaps never to see this Corvus again. Oh, God. Until Corvus returns months <laughs> later. But that is a story for another time. With a cool Lorenzo. Sadly, Lorenzo's story hour is up, and I must leave you with this entirely true tale of exactly what happens. The first times that Ada and Tustin met Corvus. And unicorns. I and thank you so much, Thumpers. That's how I remember it. That's exactly how I remember it. Thank you, Thumpers, for your support, uh, for your um, uh, helping uh, uh, everything to happen. Um, I don't know how much. Do we have time? Yes, we we definitely have time. Talk to the goats. We have time for tips. Time for ah. tips. Hi, chat. Hello, chat. <laughs> be, like, be professional. Have a plan to kill everyone you meet. Yeah. All right. I'm going to jump right in. Um, uh, oh. Just a reminder, in case you're going at 9 p.m. is uh, Valiant, so stick around for that. Um, uh, $40 from Trooper SJP. Wow. Oh, thank Trooper. you. Uh, Mina Cobblestone Street News have heard there are sightings of unicorns out in the villages. Maybe Skywatch could use some useful bits of, go of gossip. One each for Ada, Tustin, Lorenzo, and Corvus. Oh my god. Oh man. That's great. That's uh, great. Arendin. I, I never know how to pronounce. Um, uh, especially as Lorenzo. It's hard to pronounce your names as Lorenzo. Awesome job GMing, Tony. Who is Tony? Uh, it's great getting to see some of the backstory of how the group got together. Corvus, this is your time to shine or seek into the shadows, whichever. $15. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. $30 from Wishful Thinker 8 for Corvus. <laughs> Um, $40 from Arceus46. Powers for all. Ada Tustin, Lorenzo Corvus. Hopefully Yay! the red god. Blue god gets well soon. Heart. Um, $30 from Mr. Bandana Head. I value you all. Ada, Lorenzo, and Tustin. Aww. Thank you. Um, uh, $20 from Cope the Joke. Corvus, be careful with your grandmother's advice. It sounds a bit metaphorical. I mean, she can't literally mean run naked through a field because that's just an awful idea. You will yeah. get stickers and itchy brush everywhere. I mean, I would imagine. <laughs> Ten dollars from Mister Bandana Head Corvus. Scare him good. Yeah. Nice. Um, I gotta be sneaky. Uh, Sixty dollars from William, uh, whose oh, name is remarkably you. the same as Ada's son. Uh, here are six dice from Neonet. Who is this oh, Neonet? Uh, looks Neonet. like there's a new Neonet. red god, Lorenzo. Go oh. Ada Tustin, Lorenzo Corvus. Well, thank you. I think that's the new net that they have in oh, their right. fishing. Good, good for fishing. Yes, I've heard it's of that. It's a magic that. tech yeah. item, right? Yeah. Uh, 
Megalo Blazemon, uh, keep a Cineverse alive, $25. Yes, save the Cineverse. Save Cineverse. $25 anonymous. Question for Sarah. Who wins in a fist fight between Spock and Chewbacca? Answer oh, that, that was Sarah. That was a, earlier, probably. Yes. Yeah, I must have gotten through finally. Yeah. Um, also, Savage we'll Pump. Uh, I, I, also, oh, I think I've gotten into. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm reading fine. people. Um, yeah. I think I've gotten into eight one. So also, I, I think Chewbacca wins. I think what I went too question? far. Uh, between Chewbacca and who? Spock. Well, I mean, Spock's very strong. Chewbacca, they would. Uh, Spock wouldn't punch. Spock, Spock would just assuming that Chewbacca yeah. has the right. So that's the to. thing. If it's a fist fight, then it's got to be Chewbacca. Yeah, if it's, because, yeah. I agree. Chewbacca's got different anatomy, and he's also bigger. I think Spock would have like a heart to heart with Chewie though. Uh, Vulcan doesn't rip your arms off when yeah. he loses. That's fine. I don't know. Vulcans are very strong, though. But but Spock's gone against Klingons and stuff and come out of it okay. I think he'd use logic and Russian. Well, here's the thing: is it like right. a snake or is it like a to ring? Cut this delightful <laughs> conversation off, but um, uh, we must uh, say good night to our Thumper friends. Thank you so much for watching for your support. Uh, let's introduce ourselves one more time. Yeah, I'm Claudia. Uh, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, it's Jackie Dash J A K I D A S H D. <laughs> I'm Janine. I am at Admiral Asthma. I'm Dan Poslins at Dan Poslins. I'm uh, Lorenzo Valerue de la Croix, but uh, you can refer to me as Tony Beeman at Tiny Beeman. And please uh, message uh, Lauren at Random Tuesday and wish her well that um, her vomit stays inside of her body. I just wanted to feel better. It and was. Man, yes, yeah, it changed um, it her was hair quite too. The adventure, I believe, on the way, uh, I believe she found out on the way here. Yeah, so, yeah, that so thank oh, you for yes. rolling with us. We will be back next week. Once again, thanks to Green Ronin, yeah, uh, for providing yeah. fantasy. Yeah, yeah. it's a great is awesome. system. It is I like fantastic. It. I get to stab things gross. Thank you, Thumpers, and <laughs> thanks, good night. guys. Good, good night. night. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here with.